senior detective. It's junior for if me. If you're new to it, dear dad, greetings from the new deputy curator at Beecho Museum in Washington, D.C. I miss you, by the way. How's Africa? I sure hope this letter reaches you in Ouagadougou before you move on to Nairobi. So I got the internship. Your old friend Franklin Rose was awfully nice <gasps> to submit my name glass? to the rest of fantastic. the members of the museum's board of directors. What an opportunity while I'm in between cases. As you probably know, the museum specializes in ancient Maya culture. My supervisor is going to be Joanna Riggs, a well-known archaeologist. Maybe you've seen her name in the news recently, in conjunction with the discovery of a strange Maya monolith. Apparently, it's created quite Ooh, a buzz among experts Maya. in the field. Well, Beach Hill <laughs> plans to that? feature the monolith That's in an funny. upcoming exhibition. Just imagine, this artifact has been buried for hundreds of years, and now it's going to be unveiled to the public for the first time. The museum is short-staffed at the moment, and they're expecting such a huge turnout that they've closed their doors to prepare. I can hardly wait to dig into this exciting project and learn how archaeologists and historians solve the mysteries of ancient cultures. I'll keep you posted. It's just oh, Love, Nancy. great opening letter. Nancy Drew, I presume. I'm Joanna Riggs. Welcome to Beach Hill. I was just checking the lock on this display case. This is one of the museum's most treasured pieces, a carving of King Pakal. Who is King Pakal? <laughs> Pakal assumed what? the throne I at hate age how it 12. Out like Can this. you imagine? Like, what is that, that was 615 AD. <laughs> he ruled for 68 years at the height of the Maya civilization. Is that jade? Yes, the Maya loved jade and used it for many of their carvings. There isn't another piece like this in the world, and it's priceless, which means I practically had to sell my own grandmother to get it. How did the museum acquire it? <laughs> Leave it to Taylor Sinclair. He's a wizard when it comes to these Why deals. It You'll meet him later. <laughs> now then, Nancy, just... you're coming on board at a critical time for Beach Hill. <laughs> An exhibit of this caliber is not kid stuff. Franklin Rose assures me you're a real trooper, and I oh hope he's gosh. right because I'm not here to babysit. I don't care who your father is. That was that was okay. Top notch opening. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Okay. What did she say to me? This is not kid stuff? Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, If there's one thing I've learned from my father, it's the value of hard work. If there's one thing I've learned from my father, it's the value of hard work. Just tell me where to start. There's a list of tasks for you in the lab. Once you've knocked those off, we'll regroup. Where's the rest of the staff around here? We've had to make some, uh, budget cutbacks, so we'll be relying heavily on our volunteer staff. Namely, you. <laughs> Besides Henrik and me, the only people who will be around to pester you are Taylor Sinclair, my ace art dealer, and Alejandro Del Rio, attaché to the Mexican consulate and executive thorn in my side. Tell me more about Alejandro Del Rio. Ugh, wouldn't you rather hear about the monolith? It's a massive pillar of stone, nearly 1,500 years old, with Maya glyphs carved into it. We've installed it in the garden. Wait until you see it. Wow. How do you know it's 1,500 years old? According to Henrik, the monolith was made at the special request of King Pakal himself, but we don't know what its purpose was. Who's Henrik? Henrik Vanderhoon, world-renowned expert in Maya hieroglyphics. He's the latest addition to the Beach Hill Brain Trust. I told him I don't even want to see his pointy Vander head till he's got a translation on that monolith. Any last advice before <laughs> I get down to business? <laughs> Semper ubi sabubi. I don't remember uh, Joanna being so spicy like that as a kid. Like, man, she's spicy. Okay. Wow, the flood of nostalgia is just hitting me right now with this music and this early 2000s decor, like where everything had like fake plants on it. Yes, I'm here for it all. Art in the Americas, April 2002. Man, I was three? I was three. <laughs> I was three in 2002. 
an interview with Prudence Rutherford. Woo. So how did a New York society woman like yourself end up in Topeka, Kansas? Rutherford. Should, okay, wait, should we do this interview as, <laughs> as Rutherford's voice? <laughs> oh, what's up, Gooba Jetpack? Jetpack. My husband, Herbert Laszlo, was a hydro engineer when he got appointed to head up the Kansas River Flood Control Project Naturally, we came to Topeka. When Herbert drowned, everyone thought I would make a beeline back to New York. But after 36 years in Topeka, I just didn't have the heart to leave. The truth is, this is my home now. <laughs> That's exactly how she do it, too. <laughs> okay, just as an aside, I find it interesting that you never took his name. That was almost unheard of at the time of your marriage, wasn't it? Wow, that's basically saying, like, she's old. Yes, well, I never was one to worry about conventions. And where I come from, once a Rutherford, always a Rutherford. Well, you certainly have been a trailblazer. Now, back to Topeka. What about your love for the arts? What in the world do you do for culture and entertainment here? Oh, my stars! Don't underestimate Topeka, dear. The arts are alive and well here. We have a theater, symphony, and over 20 art galleries. I organize the St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Corn Growers Ball, and I sit on the board of the Topeka Commissions for the Arts, too. This is the capital of Kansas, after all. Mrs. Rutherford, art appraiser is thrilled to be featuring your fire ruby necklace in this month's issue. Please, tell us about the extraordinary piece of jewelry. The necklace originally belonged to Herbert's mother, Hester. Uh, rest her soul. We never got along. Oh, but those rubies really did blaze like a burning ring of fire around her neck. You had the necklace altered when you uh, inherited it, is that right? Yes, well, Hester's spirit was just a bit too overpowering in the necklace. I felt like I was going to be strangled whenever I wore it. So I decided to add a piece from my own family to balance out the energies and, you know, make it my own. <laughs> What's up, Caitlin? What's up, Wizard Kitten? What a time to enter the stream. I'm so sorry. <laughs> man <laughs> thank you thank you thank you for the bits topeka commission for the arts how cultured that was super entertaining to read i need them to bring prudence back for another game please i beg you her if you ever see this i love her The Great Plaza of, oh, I can't read that, of something, somewhere Gu Guatemala? That's actually, that is beautiful. Can you imagine that structure? That is beautiful. All right, let's go investigate. Addenda to the Malankong Conflict in the Republic of This sounds. This is a very. This is like a very important document that is just lying around. Beach Hill shall make two payments of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The first being paid upon execution of this contract. The second being paid upon delivery thirty days after the delivery of property. Oh wow. During the period of the loan, Beach Hill shall have the exclusive rights to reproduce images of the property for the following derivative. Postcards, posters, t-shirts, coffee mugs, keychains, and mouse pads. That was added. And mouse pads. <laughs> ah, Brenda, my friend. Welcome. Beach Hill shall assume full liability for the property for the duration of the agreement. We'll just go ahead and keep that.
The knob is missing. Did we look at every- oh, over here? Major con contributors to the Beach Hill Museum. Hugh Honeyham. Oh look, it's Punchy LaRue! I forgot, yeah. Punchy LaRue, y'all. This was actually the second time this name came up. <laughs> First time was in final scene. Simone gives it to Nancy. Topeka Commission for the Arts. That's the organization Prudence Rutherford works for. Oh my gosh, Indie Fan 123? Isn't that an Isn't that an Instagram account? Indie Fan 123? Is that where they is that where they got their name from? That's so clever. Indie Fan 123. I'm gonna look that up later. It was a contest winner? Yeah, why, why do I know that name? It's from the message boards? So we'll, I guess we'll come in, we'll come in and read some more, I guess when it's time. It's locked. Cause I know we have to come down these and read them and stuff. Yeah, let's go meet Henrik. Henrik. You must be Nancy, the new deputy curator. I'm Henrik Vanderhuhn. That's right, I'm Nancy. Joanna tells me you're translating the glyphs on the Palenque monolith. Yes, it's quite a project. The opportunity of a lifetime for me. How's the translation coming along? Fabulous, just fabulous. <clears throat> anyway, what can I do for you? I'm curious about your work. How do you go about translating a glyph anyway? It can be a complicated process, involving research, piecing lots of different elements together, and a healthy dose of guesswork. Yeah, oh my gosh. He's naked. <laughs> I don't know why that's... It just blended in so well. They should have put... Maybe, you know, they could have put like a... Like a teal... Or a green, make it pop a little bit. So there isn't a definitive dictionary of Maya glyphs where you can look things up? Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, glyphs are so intricate and full of subtleties that multiple meanings may be embedded in a single glyph. So three distinct looking glyphs may all translate to mean sunshine, roughly, but with different nuances. There is so much we still don't know. Lucky for me, I guess, or I'd be out of a job. Joanna turned me loose without too many instructions. Do you have any advice for me? Well, as you've probably heard, the museum is closed in preparation for the exhibit, so you'll have free run of the place. Please explore. The sooner you get to know your way around, the better. Think of the lab as your home base, your center of communications. Anyone who wants to get in touch with you will leave a note or a voicemail here, so check in often. I'm very busy with my work, so you're going to have to be pretty independent, but I suspect you wouldn't have it any other way. All right. See you around, Henrik. Bye. I guess let's go look at our task list first. Um, yeah, oh yeah. So we have to sort out the shards of pottery and reassemble the pot. Priority, bring, oh, oh, that document to Alejandra. Order bubble wrap, packing tape, sticky labels, match recorded narrations to appropriate displays, and reorder Maya numbering exhibit in the main exhibition hall. Okay, so we've got a lot to do. Can we, can we go ahead and do this? Uh, call Silvio and order his stuff? You have no voicemail. For an outside line. 
Oh, it doesn't want me to call yet? Oh, I, well, maybe I have to talk to him first. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, great to hear from you. How's the internship treating you? Are Joanna and Henrik showing you the ropes? I've got a lot to learn about the Maya, but Joanna and Henrik seem very knowledgeable. Glad to hear you're settling in. I'm off to a meeting, but feel free to call me if you have any questions. I'm sure everything's going to be smooth sailing, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree, Tori. I, that's actually what I love about this game. Like, I think you can have it both ways and still have a really rockin' game. Like, you can have a game like Final Scene where it starts off with immediate drama, and you can have a game where it's, like, slow starting, but it's still really good um, because of what it has threaded throughout the story. So, like, yeah, I totally agree with you. Haha, -ha, there's the knob. And this is the first time we meet Sunny June! I think you can call Silvio. Nancy just doesn't write down his... Oh, Nancy doesn't write any numbers down. Okay, I'll go write down. <laughs> no Coco Kringle for you, buddy. I hate that bull game. It's all random. Or is it? Choosing when I pass, when the computer passes. Try Pascal's triangle? Interesting. Hurricane Sunny. <laughs> oh, that audio narration thingy is going to be so much work. <laughs> Luckily, old Hurricane Sunny managed to ahem, borrow Joanna's notes for this project. Oh, nice. So it actually tells you. I didn't know it told you. That's nice. I just have to check out the latest Alien Adventure games, www.justadventure.com. I wonder if that was a real site back then that they did. If only someone would make a game about them, about the Maya and toss in some aliens and UFOs, of course. How ironic, because that's really what we're doing right now. <laughs> Okay, well, let's actually go call Silvio since Nancy doesn't write any numbers down. Okay. 202-555-9963. You have no voicemail. Oh, wrong number. You have no... Oh. I didn't finish. You have no voice ma Silvio's curatorial yeah, there we go. Oh, um, I'd like to place an order. I'd like to place an order, please. Have you ordered from us before? Well, I haven't personally, but the museum has. Okay, good. That saves me a lot of paperwork. What's the account number? BH119K. BH119... BH119K? Beach Hill? Are you serious? That's right. I'm the new deputy curator, Nancy Drew. Well, whoop de doo it's Nancy Drew. <laughs> but Silvio's curatorial bonanza no longer does business with Beach Hill. I've sent all six of the outstanding invoices to a collection agency. And you jokers won't get another packing peanut out of Silvio yep. Jr. ever. Do not call here again. Woo, that would make me sweat. I <laughs> I don't do the confrontation like that. Okay, well, can we... We'll just cross that off. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's go do the pottery. 
Let's go put the pottery back together. It looks like some pieces are missing. Oh, we can't do it until we have the other pieces? Hmm. It's locked. It's locked. Congratulations on your purchase of the state-of-the-art Diana Ham Model 2000. We at Kremer, Kremer, com, Kremer com, know that you will enjoy your new communication device for years and years. Below are some helpful pieces of information, both for your safety and convenience. The wonderful world of ham radio. Your new Dyna Ham Model 2000 lets you listen in on parts of the world you never knew existed and interact with friends from faraway lands. The Space Age digital keypad allows you to enter a four-digit frequency or channel. You can either listen to the... Sorry, that, that is just some good music. The music is just so good in this game. I had to appreciate it for a second. You can... You can then either listen to the activity on the channel or use the Diana Ham Morse code keyboard to transmit a message. Please consult local, state, federal, and international laws on appropriate and legal usage. To enter in a frequency or channel number, simply enter a four-digit number and press the connect button. Right, yeah, dot and dash, okay. Oh, really? Okay, so you can send the greater than sign to ignore a previous message. Avoid placing fingers or foreign objects into the main radio tube holding socket. Electrical shock can result. Ah, there's the Morse code. I wonder if we should, can we call her, Sheila? Okay, keep that in mind. That may be someone we want to talk to later. I shouldn't be messing around with this without permission. Okay, so what were some other stuff that we had to do? Oh yeah, bring, oh yeah, priority. We gotta go to Alejandro. All right, let's go to Alejandro. No, I forgot to go to the receiving room. Okay, we'll do that when we get back. My bad. So focused on this tax list. Ooh. Establishing legal provenance, it's your duty. The history of ownership. A work of art may travel great distances and change hands many times during the course of its lifetime. Typically, legal transfer of ownership happens either as a sale, an inheritance, or a gift. Provenance documents are an important means of establishing an artwork's authenticity as well as confirming the legality of its ownership. They show the geographic, personal, and commercial route of a work of art. That is, they identify the date of each exchange, the names of the people involved, the circumstances of the transfer, and the location where the transaction has taken place. Ideally, an unbroken chain of ownership can be traced all the way from the artist's workshop to the present day. Frequently, though, some documents are missing. The art dealer or museum curator has no way of knowing how the artwork has been exchanged during these gaps in the record. When this is the case, the legality of present day ownership becomes suspect. So when you're researching an artwork's provenance, the following documents may provide clues. We wanna look at sales catalogs, exhibition, exhibition catalogs, collection catalogs, papers and business records of collectors and dealers, wheels and insurance inventories.
Look at that old computer. <laughs> How may I help you? I, look at this. Nancy's so funny. Everywhere she goes, she's just going to try and full on speak whatever, wherever she's at. Whether it's France, Spanish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy Drew. The new deputy curator over at Beach Hill. So, you're Joanna Riggs' newest pirate in training. How does it feel to join the ranks with the modern-day conquistadors? Conquistadors? You had better brush up on your history, young lady. When the Spanish explorers invaded Mexico, they became known as the conquistadors, or conquerors. They robbed the indigenous peoples of their wealth, not just their gold, but their artwork. They're sacred objects. Anything they did not steal, they burned to the ground. Alejandro, I understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration, but that was hundreds of years ago. What does this have to do with Beach Hill? There is more. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the ruins of ancient civilizations predating even the Aztecs. Many of the dig sites were robbed, and the stolen artifacts were sold off to art museums and collectors around the world. Today, finally, it is illegal among most civilized nations to remove an artifact from its native country. But sadly, there are thousands of precious antiquities with highly questionable provenance floating around the Western world. What do you mean by... Questionable provenance. An artifact's provenance is the story of its origin That's what and we just ownership. About. For example, how it made its way from a temple at Chichen Itza to a museum in Washington, D.C. If the artifact's provenance reveals that it has been stolen, then that artifact must be returned to the country of its origin. So the problem has been remedied, hasn't it? No, not at all. Provenance documents are often tampered with or forged to cover up the theft. Because of this, thefts continue and a great deal of art is moved on the black market, even today. Unethical art dealers and greedy museum curators do nothing to stop this. That is honestly some really wild information. I don't think I fully understood that as a kid playing this. Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? If Joanna Riggs or that overstuffed pillow head Sinclair had any decency, they would take measures to see that all Maya artifacts were returned to Mexico at once where they belong. And what if these measures are not taken? My country will have its due, Nancy, even if I have to begin reclaiming its artifacts with my own two hands. Oh, good point. He so could have been referenced in lie. That would have been awesome. That would have been a great reference. I admire your conviction, Alejandro. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Palenque monolith is only here on loan from Mexico. I am still not happy that such a rare find will have its debut exhibition on American soil. But in my country, too, there are people for whom money talks. I will take those documents now. Oh. Thank you. I have some business with Joanna at the museum later, so I will return the contract to her then, after I have looked it over. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. You may consider your mission accomplished. Well, uh, okay then. Goodbye. <laughs> like that's that. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the museum because I know what, there was like there was a ton of stuff still left to do there. Good thing Franklin gave me the museum key. Okay. Oh yeah, let's get the uh, knob fixed. Cool to do that. I need something to get this open. Can I use this card? Oh. I need something to get this open. The knob is missing. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Sweet. 
Okay, so now we have some headphones. We can listen to some stuff. And let's go check this other room, too. Mm, the shipping and receiving room. <laughs> Positively no smoking. So these are all the things that have been packed. If they were insured, where they were excavated. Yeah, I don't think I can do anything uh, particularly. Oh, sunny stuff. Oh, his floppy disk. Oh, yeah, and a piece of the... Uh... Was that the only piece we needed to fix the uh, potter? I need to find another piece. Oh, no, we still have one more piece we gotta find. I'm trying to look and see, did I take, do I don't think I have a picture. Should I have a picture of uh, what was in Sunny's book? I probably should take a picture of that, huh? Let's go see. Yeah, this. So we probably need to go to each of these places. See what they are about. <laughs> Picture. And then that way we'll know. I can write like a what the what each topic is about based on what letter they're at. Oh, hello, ahoy, ahoy, professor. <laughs> Welcome to Be Chill. We're just getting started. Pretty much. All right, let's go this way. Let's go into the garden. All right, so the first thing up is this one. Card panel. This limestone panel depicts the presentation of three captives to this throne of shield Jaguar the second. Okay. So the next letter is C. Oh, we found a tile. This is the bicephalic altar? Got two heads? This altar was dedicated during the reign of the 16th ruler of Copan, Yax Pasa. The focal point to this artifact is a large two-headed, yes, crocodile. This creature is called the bicephalic monster, and it represents the continuous cycle of life and death. So C is two-headed crocodile. This 
side looks damaged. <gasps> I forgot this is where we meet Taylor. Nancy Drew, or should I say, oh, Detective Drew, I'm Sinclair. Who told you I was a detective? I was at a meeting with the BOD recently, and I caught wind of your appointment and your credentials. Very impressive, if I do say so myself. Yeah, what is the BOD? The BOD? That would be the board of directors, those cranky old cats. They do keep the ducks squared away around here. I'll give them that. So, how's this for a specimen? Ever seen a million dollars worth of rock before? <laughs> I love the callback to uh, Treasure in the Royal Tower. Do diamonds count? Ouch. Well, they did say you were sharp. Seriously, though, thank goodness you're here. I'm afraid the museum may be in terrible jeopardy. What kind of jeopardy? Joanna told me to butt out, but I'm so fond of Beach Hill, I just hate to see it fall prey to scoundrels. Joanna told you to butt out of what? It's a sensitive subject. Meet me in my office later and I'll explain everything then. Where's your office? 707 Bing Cherry Boulevard. <laughs> I've got to go. Enjoy your first day at oh Beach Hill. Oh my gosh. Taylor is so dramatic. Like, you know, this is the this is like the uh, epitome of someone that's like you are not going to believe what happened. And you're like, what? And they don't tell you? <laughs> oh, I know. Okay, well, actually, you can ask Tori. I had this wonderful idea. Interesting. That I really wanted to do, like, dressing up for this game. But I just didn't have time for it. But we may do that for another game. So let's... Uh, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> but if you are looking at into maybe possibly wanting to cosplay as Taylor Sinclair. Kalina of Story Retold has an incredible tie that she sells that is a exact replica of Taylor Sinclair's tie. Okay, so this should be letter H. Bird, Jaguar, and Captain. This panel is one of several commissioned by Bird Jaguar and details his capture of Kahal. Okay. Next up, we have K and J, and then that should be it. Yeah. This is K. An early Maya ruler, Baktul, is represented in this Stella performing... Or Stila performing a vision quest ceremony... The vision serpent looms over the king, revealing the ancient spirit that is being con contacted. Four miniature gods hang onto the body of the vision serpent. And then just J. I don't think it's that one. Yeah, that one. Rutherford Slab. Use my... Wait, what? Use the headphones? Oh! In addition to adorning <gasps> themselves oh. with jewelry and costumes, the Maya <laughs> shaped their bodies oh, to no. heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of <laughs> infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. So wait, oh. I see. My bad. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so I see now. These are the audio tracks that go... Got it. Oh, man. In addition... 
So do I need to go back and like, like listen to these? The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam. Oh, well, I did get that one. I did write down that one. I feel like good. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local Kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the right as a captured uh, I Actually, I think we may be good because I think I wrote down the keywords. The four miniature gods. And so I think we may be good. So I think, I think we may be good. All right, well, let's do the museum ones because I don't have those. But this time I'll know to wear my headphones now. All right, so L's over here. Ceramic bowls such as the one featured in this exhibit may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This <laughs> bowl was corn. either dedicated to or used to supplicate the god of war, Balak. Ceramic bowls such as the one featured in this exhibit may have been used as vessels for burnt offerings of incense or corn. This bowl was... So some of the audio tracks don't match. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and Wait. some are represented with pictures. Wait. <laughs> I'm finally understanding what y'all mean. Okay, wait. So, some of the audio tracks don't match the exhibit. I see now. Oh my gosh, I see now. Okay, wait. Ceramic bowls such as the one... F okay, so those are... This This is right? Ceramic bowls such as the Offering one featured bowl. in... Offering yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so... Okay, hold on. So this one's right. Oh my gosh. This is, no, this is like my third. I should know this, but it's honestly been a really long time. But. The Maya used different methods to represent numbers. Here is an example of the numbers from zero to 19. So A should be left. ham radio. Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well known, it is difficult to determine the range of Maya influence. Some experts believe the Maya may have traveled as far south as the Amazon and as far <laughs> Okay, okay, I, I, that one was right. So L and F were right. Oh my gosh. Now this one. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. That one's right. Chak was the god of rain. Ishel, goddess of the moon, presided over Ch And then we have... Oh, I haven't looked at the jade carving. We have this one. Lady Zach Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed down from father to son, but Lady Zach Cook broke this custom by establishing herself as a deity. Okay, and then this one. I oh. am Lord Pakal, oh. ruler of the mighty kingdom of Palenque. All those who come before me witness my power. Lord Pakal is considered the most influential ruler of the Maya civilization. Cultural, scientific, and military achievement flourished under his reign. As with all Maya kings, very little is known about his personal life, since all written inscriptions dealt solely with public achievements such as wars, battles, coronations, births, marriages, and death. Okay. And then we have two more rows. This one is D. Strange supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, 
played an important role in that Mayan one's not mythology. Right. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, sometimes called the celestial or cosmic monster, may have represented the sunrise or a long journey. So that should be the numbers. And then we have Maya one over here. scribes recorded the official history Bea's of the kings right. and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. Okay. And then we have N. The Maya ball game was a religious activity as well as a spectator sport. Players would propel a rubber ball through a small stone hoop using their thighs, hips, and forearms. It is believed that the players were often sacrificed. So that one's right. The date on this slab uses the Zoltan, or divine calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named day and 13 weeks each with a numerical day. The two types of weeks progress independently of each other. The date on this slab uses the... So that one's not right. Okay. Honestly, most of them were pretty right. Like, they weren't too far off, I don't feel like. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the <laughs> Ritualized Mayans. In blood this letting. panel, three captives wear garments associated with bloodletting. A variety of instruments including stingray spines, thorns, and bone awls were employed for this activity. Ritualized bloodletting was a common practice among the Maya. In this panel, three. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was <laughs> The narrator was way too happy about the bloodletting. Archaeologists work in some of the most remote areas of the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ah, ham so that's is the ham radio one. Ham Okay. The Maya kings were often in a protracted state of war with local kahals. Here, Bird Jaguar stands to the so right that one's as a right. captured lord kneels at his feet. So the age Kahal is correct. Holds a... The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins, Hun Ahau and Balam, and, and the twins of sacrificial right. dance, Chak Shiv Chak, and the baby jaguar. So I think this one's In sorry. addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya uh. shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry I think that one goes under L. I feel like. Let me see. Yeah, there's beads. So I think that goes under L. I don't know. Let's see. Let's try. We'll give it a shot. Okay. I feel like I'm about to be so confused on this. So A. A is supposed to be the ham radio one. No. Yes. And A should be about the ham radio.
I am Lord Pekar. Lady Zack? The Maya were pantheistic. Ceramic bowls such as archaeologists work in some of the most remote yeah, that areas be of that. the world. Ham radios are often the only means of contacting the outside world. Ham is an acronym for handheld amateur radio. Okay, so that one should be right. Uh, B. B was right, so that one should be good. Or is it? I don't know. Maya scribes. Yeah. C. C was not right. C should be the two-headed bicephalic crocodile thing. Archaeologists work in... Although the geographic range of Maya cities is well... The Maya used different methods to... Maya scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little... In addition to adorning them, the Maya ball game was a re ritualized bloodletting was a common <laughs> I'm gonna practice. I'm going to laugh at that one every Maya. time it comes up. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins. Hun the date on this slab. Strange supernatural creatures, sometimes yes. called monsters, it should be that one. played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. The bicephalic monster, sometimes called the celestial or cosmic monster, may have represented the sunrise or a long journey. And then D was not right either, I don't believe. D was the one that should be... Strange supernatural creatures. Yeah, some... it should be about the numbers. In addition to adorning... Maya scribes... The Maya used different that methods one. to represent yeah, numbers. Yeah, D should be the number one. Here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19, from top left to bottom right. Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. Okay, and I don't think E was right either. I am Lord Pakal, ruler no. of the mighty king. I think that one was right. I think E was right. Because that was the that was the jade carving, so I think that one's right. F was also right, so oh okay, I think one side's done. All right, G. G was not right. It's, that one should be the adorning themselves. The Maya ball game was... In addition to adorning yeah. themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. Okay, great. Okay, so we got G done. This one's H. H was right. I was right. J is not right. I think J is the one. Where was J? J, is that that like token slab thing? In addition to adorning themselves, the Maya ball game was a re ritualized bloodlet. The four miniature gods clinging to the vision serpent are the headband twins. There, Hunt that Ahal looks like it's Balam, in order. And the twins oh, of sacrificial we did dance, it. Chalk, Shib, Chalk, and the baby jaguar. The Maya were particularly <laughs> I love how it's still fascinated going. with twins. And many of oh, the it's Maya still going. were paired together. <laughs> oh, yay, we did it. Okay, great. That wasn't that wasn't as that wasn't as bad. Once you guys fix my mistake, <laughs> once you guys fix my mistake, because y'all are the most loveliest chat in the whole wide world, give me the biggest heart ever. You saved me. All right, let's go cross that off the list. No, uh, oh, I feel so nice to cross off the list. Oh, it's the best ever. And we did that. 
Oh, snap! Look how far we got! Now we just have to reorder the Maya Numri exhibit in the main exhibition hall. Oh my gosh, we are just doing this thing. Oh, save the game! This is why y'all are the chat. Best chat. Alright, let's save the game. Uh... What should it be? Uh... Uh, oh, I know. What in the narration? <laughs> Not what in the tarnation. What in the narration? <laughs> okay, save it. <laughs> All right, continue. Um, this is the numbers. This is just a jam, so I just figured we would just... Alright, done. That's my new ringtone. Just one more tile. Oh, I just... Oh, I have to have one more! <gasps> uh, okay, we were close, so we need one more. find that out. I feel like there's some other stuff. Oh, wait. I haven't gone up here. <laughs> I forgot you could go up here. Cool. Oh, there's the other piece. Oh, yes. Why is there a Sour Patch Kid here? Why is that there? That looks exactly like that uh, statue from uh, Curse of Blackmore Manor. To me. Well, I don't think we do. We have a card. Is that what this card is? Oh, it is. Welcome to the Beach Hill Maya Mystery Temple. Temple. With the help of a museum guide, you will learn about the Maya culture. What do you do? Pakal ruled over which city in present day Mexico? Oh my gosh. So we'll have to know all those answers? All right, well, let's go do the pottery first, I guess. Henrik is gone. There, now I can start putting this together. All right, let's do it. No, that doesn't fit right there. Oh, is it this one? Yes. And then this one goes here. So that's done. We can cross that off. Oh my gosh, this is so good. We literally only have one thing left. Okay, so I probably should get the quiz questions. Probably should do that. Does it tell me, King Pakal? 
Uh, at the age of 12, Bacall claimed divine descent and ruled the great Maya city state of Palenque. Palen Bacall was buried wearing the jade death mask you see here at the right. The mask was meant to distinguish Bacall as royalty. Is it Palenque? It's not, it's not that one. Oh, it is? Oh. All right, let's, let's see. Oh yeah, what is the name of Pakal's mother? Oh, uh, wasn't it like Lady Kook? Oh no, Lady Zoo? Or is it just? No, I thought we, I thought we just had it. Oh, is oh it is Zach, Zach Kook? Ooh, y'all are so good. What is the name of the calendar used to compute the 260-day ceremonial year? Uh, I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's that. What is the name of the supreme god in Maya mythology? Man, I'm so glad y'all know this. I'm so glad y'all know. Um, what is the name of a modern Mayan language? <laughs> I'm just gonna rely on chat for the quiz. Quiche. Congratulations, you've successfully completed the temple level one quiz. If you have already solved the other activities, you may now use your suite. What other activities? We have to do match up and bowl. Isn't that in here too? Try your hand at this ancient Maya war game. Yeah, play against the computer, play against a friend. Love that. Uh, pass. I remember this game being like so like, oh man, the randomness hey. of it. There we go. Ah, uh, did it get me? Oh, okay. One more time, y'all. One more time. Hut. 
We did it. Oh, wait, we gotta do it one more time? Aw, oh, man. Hey! 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 Bye! Yeah. yeah, we did it. So we can get the card now? Where's the, I think, where's, there's one more. Ah, I should one. put in my temple key card. Oh no, you have to know the images. Okay, that's hard. How do you know? Like, I'm gonna have to go back through. So what are the what are the what are the things? Ink, North, Throne, Nineteen, Black, and Road. Oh wait, is that? Oh, can you just like guess them? Oh. So okay. That's three. That's north. This one's road. This one's 19. Oh my gosh, we can go to the next level. That was great. Nice. All right. Oh my gosh, that's so scary. Congratulations, you've reached level two. What is the name of one of Sh Shield Jaguar's wives? Did I write that down? No, but I know where it's at. Wait, is it the Stingray? Stingray? What? St what? Oh, <laughs> I need to save the game? Let me save the game. Let me get out. How do I get out? Save the game. Can I save here? Um. Chat. Tells me quiz answers. Yeah, there we go. Save. Okay. All right. Anybody know the answers to this quiz? What is the name? I thought it was Stingray. When I was looking at my thing. Because I have carved panel, limestone, three captives, shield of jaguar, and I put bloodletting. What did I put? Thorn? Stingrays? Question mark? Wait, what? Lady Zog? Which Maya monster represents the continuous cycle? Oh, that no, that one. That's the bicephalic crocodile oh is it or is it just crocodile bicephalic 
crocodile. Yeah. What did the Maya call a decorative woven blouse? Does anybody know what the Maya called a decorative woven blouse? Okay. A huey, 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 huey. That. What is a kahal? Oh, I remember. I wrote that one down too. Pro kahal was a prominent local man. I don't know what it means. Oh, it literally means nobleman? Ah, sweet. What is the name of a Maya matchmaker? I can't find the answer to this in the museum, sunny June. So this is, this is, I guess what we don't, we don't know this one. We have to find this out. Okay. Can I do this one? Maze game offline, enter system login and then password. Ooh, I don't have that one. So I'm assuming that we can't really do much of anything on on this specific level. Ooh, can we probably do this though? So we moved back some, so maybe we should go further back, but keep it high. Oh, that was too high. I think we were at four here. Yeah. It didn't really look like it changed very much, either three or four. Unless I need to do like middle. Oh, that was it. Okay, so since we're so far back, do you think it should be low this time? But our power should be greater? Or should it still be middle? No, keep it mid. Yes, to greater power, but keep it mid. Okay. Well, are we feeling? Are we feeling a little bit of a, a five six power? Okay. Oh snap! Okay. So I feel like our power should be like six. So we're all the way at the back. But do we keep it? I don't think we should make it high. I think it either needs to be mid or low. <laughs> I, I love looking for the, at the chat for validation. Like, is this right? <laughs> okay, low. All right. Ding, ding. We did it. What if I didn't have my card in there? Whew. That would be so sad. Yeah, so we can't really do anything else. Um, ooh. Getting to know Yum Zimmel. Yum Simul rules over. Whoa, destroy over life, Yum Simul. Whoa, this is going so fast. Jaw notice the exposed jawbone. Yum Simul is a skeletal figure with rotting flesh. Yum Simul steals the bones and eyeballs of the dead to wear his jewelry. Arms are marked by this semi death sign. 
black spots on his skin show the infestation of disease. That is a terrifying animation. Oh. Wow. It absolutely does. It gives me like those, that dinosaur museum game too that I played. That's like from like 1995. Okay, so the only thing we didn't do was the number thing, but we're missing some numbers, I believe. Oh, is that the number? Oh. Cool. I was literally about to say we, we, we should look at different exhibits and see if there's one in there. And we just we just found it. Okay, we have it all now, but how do we know what number's what? Is there a guide somewhere? Or are we just supposed to figure it out? I should check Sunny's floppy disk. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and we need to talk to Taylor Sinclair. All right. Let's I go don't talk. think he'll be there at this hour. Oh, it's nighttime. I guess we should go back to the hotel anyways. Man, you guys can tell it's been a true, truly a long time since I've played this game. <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, when games were at night, too. Oh, it's 1.15 in the morning. My bad. Nancy's detective skills never stop. I need a disc. Whoa. Oh, these are just like my notes on everything. I need a disc. Oh, my bad. It was right there. Please enter your password. I don't know what his password is. <laughs> Why is everyone's phone prefixes 555 strange? Look around his desk for clues as to what it could be. Ah, okay, I need to do that. Well, let me can I, let me just go to bed then. I can't call anyone right now. We'll say 8 a.m. Oh, actually, you know what? While we're here, maybe we can call. Bess. It's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. Anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? So far, so good. There's a lot of excitement about the upcoming exhibit, especially since we have the Palenque monolith. The who? The monolith. It's a giant block of stone recently excavated from a cave near Palenque in Mexico. Apparently, it's a very big deal. They think it's 1,500 years old. So, have you seen it? This, uh, monolith? Yeah, it's humongous. Must weigh a ton. Like how big? As big as a refrigerator? <laughs> Maybe Bigfoot's refrigerator. Sorry, Nancy, but how would a person tell this monolith apart from, say some other big rock. Well, for one thing, it has Maya glyphs carved into it. Glyphs? Pictures that represent words or ideas, also known as logographs. Joanna Logo says the glyphs <laughs> might be a message from King Pakal. What kind of message? We don't know yet. Henrik Vanderhuhn, Beach Hill's epigrapher, is working on a translation. Who was King Pakal? He's considered one of the great Maya rulers. 
He reigned at the height of the Maya civilization. Well, Nancy, you're sounding very curatorial. Very curatorial indeed. We've been worried that you would be a little bored without a mystery to solve, but it sounds like your brain will have plenty to chew on. The whole Maya culture is a mystery to me at the moment. The last thing I'm going to be is bored. I'm sure of that. Speaking of kings, this card game's not over yet, Bess. Yes, well, I hope you've got plenty of bait for your fishing pole, dear cousin. Okay, you two. I'll call back later. Call back soon. Yeah, and good luck. Okay, so we need to go find our password for Sunny's computer. So let's go do that. Oh, <laughs> no, why? Oh no, what did I do? Oh, what's up? What's up, Daniela? All right, are you sure he doesn't, is it's not like in his book or something? I just put Hurricane Sunny. Note to self, more distract with. Yeah. Could it just be alien? Or, Co or Coco, or something, I guess something one of those things. Temple in the sky. I also didn't see anything about Maya numbers in there, so I'm really, I don't know what to do about that. I see you succeeded in reconstructing that Maya pot. Do you know what the glyph on it means? No, I was hoping you could tell me. Place name glyphs are some of the rarest and most difficult to translate. Even most of my colleagues wouldn't have a clue about this one. Ah, uh, but I'm a rare breed myself, Nancy, and this is one of my areas of expertise. <laughs> In the words of Nicholas Falcone. In Falcon. the words of Nicholas Falcone. That's awesome. Come on, spill it! The glyph on that pot signifies the great ancient Maya city of Copan in Honduras. There happens to be a very important dig going on there right now. Why is it so important? When you've been researching a civilization for over half your life, you get very excited about any new evidence that is found. I'm keeping up with the action by ham radio. Did you know the deputy curator who is here before me? Hurricane Sunny? I'm afraid I did. If he wasn't losing paperwork or setting off the fire alarm, he was cornering our visitors with his theory that the Maya were abducted by aliens. I'm afraid you'll be cleaning up his messes for a while. I'm supposed to order more packing supplies, but the company says they won't do business with us anymore. Does Beach Hill have bills it can't pay? Uh, no comment. Oh. But Henrik, how am I supposed to get this order taken care of? I hereby absolve you of that task. If Joanna wants things shipped, she can stuff them into garbage bags for all I care. Can I give that ham radio a try? Absolutely not. The radio is a tool, not a toy. One has to be extremely careful about the kind of information one sends out over the airwaves. And I do not have time to monitor you. And besides, the vacuum tubes have been terribly fussy lately. If another one blows, I think I'll go mental. See you around, Henrik. Bye. All right. So apparently, I, I just need to go back and just try any password. So let me go do that.
Hur Hurricane Sunny. Coco Kringle? Or should I put the full word Coco Kringle? Has to be plural. Oh, I have to put a space. That's not how passwords work. They can't have a space. Okay, stuff to do. Let's help me get this done. But I can't keep them all straight. The headphones will help me figure out. So I did that. Oh, is that the actual answers? Or that was wrong. Stuff to remember. Ah, there we go. Maya number system. Zero looks like a turtle shell, but no turtle. One dot equals one, two dot equals two. Ah, uh, one bar equals five. So two bars, two times five or 10. <laughs> Spicy wontons. And the bar represents the whole hand like a set of five fingers. A bar with a dot next to it, five plus one, so three bars and a dot, 16, yes? Bars are usually vertical up and down. Dots sh should be to the left of the bars. Here's the catch. If it doesn't look exactly like a dot or bar, it doesn't count. Squiggles, ovals, incomplete dots, crooked bars, chocolate bars, mini stars, horseshoes, shamrocks, diamonds, half moons, scribbles, dribbles, none of these count. Also, the Maya often put decorative marks next to their numbers, so just ignore anything that's not a bar and or dot. I repeat, anything that doesn't look like a plain old dot or a bar is out. Easy as sleeping on the job, right? Not quite. Some gods also represent numbers. They're pretty tough to pick out at first, but they'll grow on you just like mold on cheese. Some good rules of thumb. One has fish lips, really big nose, and a set of good teeth. Two has a big hat with five fingers and a semi-oval on it. I just feel like I should take a picture of this. In case we need it for later. All right, we're about to put the work in. Stuff to forget, temple quizzes. I can't figure out the answer to the level two quiz question about the matchmaker and Henrik isn't speaking to me right now. <laughs> He's way too touchy about the old ham radio. So either I'm blind as a bat and can't find an exhibit that has the answer, or we just never put it in. Joanna is no help on this, so I'll just have to wait for a horde of visitors getting very frustrated with this question once we open the museum. I'll let Henrik deal with the trauma. Came up with a great question for level three, but Henrik hates it. Once I get some time, I'll make an exhibit for this. Just don't know where I can get my hands on one. I wonder if Joanna will spring a trip for me to go down to Guatemala. Hmm. I think that's all the important stuff I need to know from there. I feel like. Okay. Let's go back. Actually, let's go talk to Taylor Sinclair. That's what I need to do. Since I haven't talked to him yet. Taylor Sinclair, fine art and rare antiquities. It's about time. Oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my poor old carcass. Want a cookie? They're from Oaxaca. No, thank you. You said Beach Hill is in jeopardy. I need to know why. The art world is being ransacked, Nancy. Prudence Rutherford, a major patron of the arts, had her fire ruby necklace stolen from her villa in Topeka. Two weeks later, a whole display case full of rare Maya artifacts was heisted from a museum in New Mexico. Do you think there's a connection between the two thefts? Who knows? I'm just telling you, this community, our friends and colleagues, 
My people are being systematically trounced by thugs! Who's to say Beach Hill won't be next? You've got to do something! Does Joanna share your concerns? I've urged Joanna to approach the board about making some security upgrades, but she just keeps saying that the timing isn't right to ask for money. With so much writing on this exhibit? How can that be? Who knows? So, you're looking for a state-of-the-art detective? We need your eagle eyes. We need we your, your bat, bat ears. ears. We, we need, need you, you to sniff out the stink, stink of trouble. trouble. I'll do my best, but it sounds like what you really need is a new breed of police dog. Don't play modest mouse with me. This, this, this dialogue back and forth is seriously the most entertaining thing ever. She says, modest mouse? Most people call me nosy Parker. <laughs> okay, no more flattery. Hey, that's an interesting piece. There, by your desk. Something tells me it's not a Maya artifact. How about that rubber shark? The artist's name is Poppy Dada. She's a teenager in South Dakota. The art world is going bananas over her stuff. I'll unload that one for some serious dinero. Is Poppy Dada her real name? I don't know. Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. <laughs> And I say Alejandro is the real bully of the playground, a lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. Joanna says you perform. Yeah, an Nancy's act just of unloading what everyone says. Beach Hill acquire the <laughs> yeah, well, my mama Getting says. Those provenance docks together was a pig <laughs> and a half. Uh, oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. Nancy! But, uh, to have been Don't at the you height be of my Nessie? career back before the crackdown. Those were the days. Oh, okay. Pig and a half? A pig and a half? Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today, though, Nancy. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? Standard. 10%. It's no king's ransom. Unless, of course, you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? I'd better get going. See you around. Let's look at the painting. Nice. I don't know. There's really nothing else to look at in his office. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Nancy is spilling the tea. Uh, that's right. All right. Let me pull up our photo. And let's go see if we can do the number system. And if we knock that out. That means that we have done all the tasks that have been assigned to us as curator. That will be our last thing for now. Okay, so he was saying that a bar equals five and a dot is one, so this would be 16. That's 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's 16. Okay. What else do we have in here? Five, six, seven. So that's right. 10, 11, 12. This one would be, let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we'll switch those two. This just has one dot, so I assume that's the one. That 18, so that's right. This only has four dots, so I assume it goes here. This would probably go where 10 is at. 15, that's right. Five, that's right. 10, 11, that's right. So this 5, 6, 7, 8, that's right, 15, 16, 17, okay, where's 17 at? Okay, We're, that looks 
It looks good. All right, so let's go over the other ones. 17. So, wait, 17, 18, and 19. Wait, didn't we already put 17 down? And 18? 17, 18, and 19 all look like the original numbers put with the removable jaw of Mahon. So these jaws right here? Thirteen has a T on its cheek. So that one goes there. So I wonder why, how is this one not one? Oh, that's zero. Oh. So it says one has fish lips, a really big nose, and a set of good teeth. Do y'all see that? They all have the same teeth to me? What is it? Only five of the numbers are Mayan gods. Not all of Sunny's notes apply, so you really should only be looking for ones you don't have dots and bars for. has a big hat with five fingers and a semi-oval in it. This is two? Yeah, with its hat and stuff. Three looks like a doctor. Ah, that's, that's the doctor. Four has his or her tongue sticking out. I see nobody with a tongue sticking out. Um, five has wrinkles with a fancy hat. Six wears an eye patch with an X on it, so that's right. Seven wears rectangular glasses, that's not there. Eight has curly forehead ornament. And a P symbol on the cheek, that's none of those. Ignore four. Yeah. Trying to see where else is, maybe we don't have. Nine has a beard or acne. I think that's nine then, because that's either a beard or acne. That makes sense. Oh, and that's, oh, okay. I think that's right, unless that's this one, because they almost look the same. Yeah, those are like almost the same. Put the eye on the top of them. That looks right. Oh. oh my gosh, that was it. That was literally it. Thank you. All right, so let's go talk to, I think the only person we haven't talked to in a minute is Joanna. Or Joanna. How are the tasks coming along? We did them all. 
Why did you become a museum curator? I became a curator because I want to help make artifacts available to as many people as possible. That's all that matters, isn't it? Unless you're Alejandro Del Rio. Do you think Alejandro would go to extreme measures, like stealing, to reclaim Mexico's artifacts? Who knows? When did Henrik come on board? I got an email from him one day saying he heard the news about Beach Hill getting the monolith. He said he'd drop everything to come here and translate those glyphs. He was even willing to take a pay cut. What could I say except, giddy up, you're hired. Where was he working before? At the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New oh, Mexico. I've got them. work to do. See you around. That's right, I wrote that number down when we first saw it. And I remember making a note that we needed to call them. So let's go call them. He's not here anymore. Uh, let's see, where's that number that I wrote down? Yeah, let's call them. And also, we can check off the last thing. Woohoo! You have no voicemail. Okay, so I don't think I can do the area codes because I couldn't earlier, so I'm just gonna do the other. Yeah. Okay, let me try that again. Oh, it took the area code for that one. Oh. Oh, I can't call them here. Oh, I have to go to my hotel to do it? <gasps> oh, that looks totally terrifying me. Beach Hill's been hit. Sit tight, Nancy. The police are on their way. Ooh, that was so dramatic. That was so dramatic. I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, it's the Scarlet Hand. <laughs> I should talk to Joanna before I touch anything. Okay. Change of plans. Let's go talk to Joanna. Someone has cooked up my worst nightmare and served it to me on a plate. I'd like to have a look at the crime scene myself. Did the police turn up any clues? The police took some samples for the crime lab, but they couldn't promise any overnight results. So if you want to put your little magnifying glass up to the scene, it's fine with me. My little magnifying glass. You know what? Don't let anyone downplay what you do, all right? You are awesome. Um, let's see. Great. I'll let you know if I find anything. Go to it. I know. Well, yeah, why do I know that? I'm going to steal it. I'm going to steal it. Why do I know that? What movie is that from? Oh, it's National Treasure. Is it National Treasure? I'm going to steal it. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> All right. Let me go stick my little magnifying glass to the crime scene. <laughs> oh, save my game. Thank you. You guys always know. Oh, I know. My little mag... 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 Wait... Magnifying glass. My little magnifying G. Continue. Ooh, that's... Oh, wow. Okay, well, we probably should call Franklin Rose, tell him what's going on, talk to Henry, get his op opinion. Oh, he's not here. Well, let's talk to Franklin Rose first. Oh. Nancy, something's coming up. Came up and I'll be gone for a bit. Your mission in the meantime. Run through the temple activities to verify. Oh, already did some of that. that. All the questions can be answered based on info available elsewhere in the museum. We don't want a little rascal rebellion on our hands when the exhibit opens, now do we? Be back as soon as possible. You have voicemail. Ooh. Press zero 
to retrieve Ma Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. To replay messages, press... All right, let's call Franklin Rose. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, hello. Do you have any news? Not really, but something tells me this case is going to get complicated. Oh, Nancy, you zero in on a case like a heat-seeking missile, don't you? I feel so much better knowing you're going to follow up on every lead. I'll help in any way I can. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Well. I'm trying to think. We've already done the temple activities. Need something? Yeah. Have you seen Henrik? I found a piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. What am I, fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Joanna. I thought I was supposed to go to Henrik with all my glyph questions. The police showed me the note. It said, the magician suffers yellow death. Whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. Does it have any significance in Maya culture? Afraid I can't help you there. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? Who knows? Wow. I love she's just like who knows, like you're on your own. Whatever. It's just no help. I'm gonna go figure this mystery out myself. Yeah. Okay. Um Let's see if we can call that number that I wrote down. Oh, is it not going to answer? I don't think I can call. I guess I can't call right now. Hmm. I guess I can't call right now. What exciting news. You have been promoted. You are now one of our elite employees. <laughs> That is so funny. Let's go talk to Alejandro. Maybe he's got some insights to tell us now that it's been stolen. Oh, and Turtle Club. Wow, you guys are quoting all the things that I know. I actually have seen that movie. Uh, yes, quite turtly enough for the Turtle Club. Hello, Nancy. Um... Yeah, Have I'm you heard you. that the call carving was stolen from the museum? Well, I heard the alarms going off, but it wasn't until Henry called me that I heard the news. 
You don't sound very concerned about all of this. I was running late. I just figured somebody tripped a wire and I kept going. Whew. Oh, Nancy's like, I'll need to alert the police about you. It's odd that I didn't see you. I was there on business, Nancy, not for tea. Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? That artifact was lost to me as soon as he'd left Mexican soil. So my friend Pakal goes underground for a while until he is sold again. Suddenly, he turns up in Amsterdam or Hong Kong. Unless he is rightfully repatriated to Mexico, what's the difference? Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Johanna Riggs outbid everyone. I had no idea a small museum like Beach Hill could afford such an expensive arrangement. Do you know much about Maya glyphs? You've caught me there. I know Spanish, English, Portuguese, and several indigenous languages, including Quiche and Nahuatl, but I have yet to learn the language of glyphs. Do you consider Henrik a conquistador, along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Henrik is a student of my culture and my heritage, I'm not trying to buy and sell it. We don't agree on everything, especially not baseball, but I have nothing against him. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Okay, so we've gotten to kind of hear his thoughts. Oh, that is so exciting. Oh, I cannot wait to hear. Oh, I cannot wait to hear. Okay, so maybe we should go to the lab now? See if Henrik is back? He is not back. I think we've, I mean, I'm pretty sure we've already done his temple stuff. Or, is there anything here? Nothing we can do here? Or wait, isn't, is there someone else we maybe haven't called? Cause wasn't there a list? Of <gasps> Henrik, Henrik! The amount of cutscenes that just randomly just. Whew. Amnesia? Wow, <laughs> Henrik must have taken a real nosedive off that pyramid. Do you think he just fell, Nancy? Or was he pushed? Sounds like you need to find out about hospital visiting hours. Yeah, but oh you'd better get the lowdown from Joanna first. This is so first. dramatic. She is your supervisor, after all. Gosh. Okay. So... <laughs> Jade has been stolen. Henrik is now amnesiac. Henrik! <laughs> So much has happened in a short period. All right, let's talk to Joanna. First, the Bacall carving is stolen, and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name. What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith. The board clams up on my funding. My mother posts my old prom pictures on the internet. <laughs> Take it easy, Joanna. I'm sure everything is going to be okay. What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? I'll call right away. You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and... 
Just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. I've got work to do. Bye. Wow. Joanna is so feisty. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you have... I hope your work goes by fast, Casey. It's been really fun hanging out. All right, let's go talk to the hospital. Well, what's going on? You have voicemail. Press... This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. Nurse this is Bluefoot. Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik Vanderhune. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vanderhune was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. Thank you. To replay messages, press zero. All right, let's give him a, a direct call. Oh, I didn't write his number down. <gasps> Was I supposed to write his number down? Or am I going to have to you listen have to his voicemail again? Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news oh, for the museum. I'm so you glad you guys write stuff down. You can't imagine the we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, it, I, I don't it's so hard to remember to what Nancy games things do get do automatically put in when she does write them down. Well, I think I, I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt bum, 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 Memorial bum, Hospital thousand. in regards to Henrik Vanderhune. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vanderhune was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is... I didn't realize that I was actually kind of five, matching five, with the stripes five, here with the, uh, Joanna. Thank you. To replay messages, press zero. Okay, here we go. This is Nurse Bluefoot. I'm calling in regard to a recently admitted patient, uh, Henrik Vanderhune. Mm, patient information is confidential. Are you a family member? No, I'm a colleague of Henrik's. Nancy Drew is my name. Nancy Drew? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. We've been unable to locate any family members, and we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin reality orientation. Can you explain the amnesia? Henrik is suffering from an acute case of post-traumatic retrograde amnesia. At the moment, he is unable to recall even the most basic autobiographical facts, from his name and address to his birthday and shoe size. He can't access the details of his personal history or events leading up to his accident. Is there any way to treat amnesia? Well, reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted with the facts and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place where the memories are stored. I see. So we need to help him find the trail of crumbs. Is that it? Exactly. First, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, like his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, the date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. Where do I come in? You can't help Henrik remember his childhood. 
But you can probably help him remember his work. And who knows where that will take him. <laughs> All roads lead to Rome, as they say. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information and pictures for the patient to look at over a period of time. You may want to bring in images or photos to place on the board. Things from the museum, perhaps. Is Henrik awake right now? Mm, not at the moment. We're keeping him under close observation. Close observation? What does that mean? Well, we wake him up every half hour to make sure he doesn't slip into a coma, and we watch for any signs that would indicate increased pressure in the brain. Increased pressure in the brain? Dilated or pinpoint pupils, vomiting, severe headaches, and or seizures are some of the common symptoms that may indicate swelling in the brain. Mm-hmm. Anyway, once he's out of the danger that's zone, so interesting, we'll move like, him that's over like to stuff neurology. That I studied. But also fun because this is probably like the only Nancy Drew game that has like any hospital nursing relation at all. Thanks for the crash course in head trauma, <laughs> Nurse Bluefoot. Oh, sorry, no pun intended. Uh, when are visiting hours? Visiting hours are ten to four every day. If the patient is not engaged in treatment and if he seems stable. Great. Uh, is there anything else? Just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. He may have attention difficulties, headaches, uh, anxiety. Sometimes he may seem giddy, too. We need to keep these conditions in check. Don't push him too hard. Or he may have some kind of meltdown. Oh, yeah, good point. That's true. That's true. Well, the last thing we want is a meltdown. I'll go easy on him. Bye-bye. So, like, the best way I can explain it is that I work on, like, the general floor. So... It's, it's, it's called med surge, but a lot of people are like, what is med surge? But it's, I just say it's like general nursing. I see a little bit of everything, which I love. I love that I can see everything. So I'm not like super specific to one thing. Like for example, some people work in the on oncology unit and all they take care of are patients with cancer. But out of the six patients that I take care of at the hospital on the med surge floor, I may have one patient that is a can like my cancer patient, like they have cancer. And I might have another patient that has like a totally unrelated issue, no cancer at all. So that's why I like my job, because it's like always ever changing. Oh, I know. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to do it, Tori, but I'm going to save it for another game. I'm going to do that for another game. I just don't know which one yet. <laughs> I forgot we have a clock we can look at. So I don't think we can go visit Henrik right now. So what else can we do? Oh, the lab. Yeah, we can go to the lab. Do any work there. I want to use this thing. Do not operate without permission. <laughs> I do. I work in a hospital. I work in a hospital here at home. In my local hometown. Oh, I forgot we could totally look at the periodic table in this game. Yeah, I don't... I'm unsure of where to go next. Oh, I know. I know someone we haven't talked to. Taylor. We haven't talked to Taylor about the theft. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. I feel the same about your profession as well. Because, like, you do speech, right? If I'm remembering. 
in I like speech at schools. I know because I think you've talked about it on streams and I've asked you questions about like the more like specificities of your job, which I find incredibly fascinating because there's so much, there's so much like detail to everyone's specific. It's profession. a fiasco just as I feared. Oh, I'm sick, sick, sick about the whole thing. I see you've spoken with Joanna. I was in the museum when it happened. Have you spoken to the police? I told them everything I know. I mean, I coughed up my brains right there on the table. <laughs> He's so dramatic. <sighs> Did you hear? The thief left a glyph message with a red handprint on it. That awful red hand was left on Prudence Rutherford's jewelry box in Topeka and on the display case in the museum in New Mexico. What's the chance they're not connected? Do you know Prudence Rutherford personally? Oh, we saw each other at functions now and then. Poor Prudence. She adored that necklace. Why do you think the thief is leaving this red handprint? To be a gruesome scoundrel? The Pakal thief's glyph message translates to the magician suffers yellow death. What in the world do you think that means? You've got me there. There was an incident at the museum. Henrik is in the hospital with a head injury. Poor Henrik. Another squabble between him and Joanna, perhaps? Oh, I'm kidding, but I do remember the time she threatened to push him in the pond. Temper, temper, I'm always telling her. <laughs> I'd better get going. See you around. That's so funny. Yeah, I d okay, so yes, I do. And I love the speech people that I work with because they are so knowledgeable. So knowledgeable about so much. Like, they, they I always feel like, well, I, I, and honestly, I feel this about, like, everyone, like, on the health team that I work with. Anytime I get the opportunity to kind of, like, work one-on-one -on -one with someone else, like, for example, speech therapist or physical therapist, occupational, any, any of that. I always learn so much. They teach me so many valuable skills um, because a lot of our speech therapists will do speech evaluations on mostly patients that have strokes. Um, and they teach me so many things on like what like ways that I can do, like help out with the swallowing function and testing things out and helping them sound out certain sounds when they're like speeches. It is just, I love them so much. And they're, they're always so much fun. I love my speech people. Oh man, well I hope your migraine goes away. Uh quickly. Um so we've talked to Taylor. The only other person I think we have not talked to is probably Bess and George. Is what I'm thinking. Yes, let me tell you what I have noticed. All, I don't know, maybe this is, I don't know, but all my speech people, they love to speak. <laughs> so, it, which is funny, it's funny, which I like to also speak, so it ends up working out, but that's what my speech people always joke about. They're like, we just like love to talk. And I'm like, I know, you and I, we could literally talk all day. <laughs> Very people oriented, so. <laughs> Let me tell you all the tea, Bess and George. No peeking at my cards, George. Hello? Hey, Bess. It's me, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. How's life at the museum? Everything was going great until someone broke into a display case and stole one of the museum's most valuable artifacts. A jade carving of King Pakal. A theft? When? How? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far, I have more questions than I do answers. But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Honestly, Nancy, it never will cease to amaze me how one girl can cross paths with so much trouble. I don't know what to make of Alejandro Del Rio, the attaché to the Mexican consulate. What's his connection to Beach Hill? Right now, he's negotiating the monolith loan agreement between Mexico and the museum. And what's your confusion? 
Something to do with dashing good looks, I hope. Well, he is a little bit handsome, but he also seems very angry about all the Mexican antiquities his country has lost over the years. How have they been lost? They've been taken by explorers and archaeologists and smugglers. I guess the laws have only recently changed to protect Mexico's rights to its own antiquities. Well, it sounds like he has a legitimate gripe. Yes, but I got the feeling he would do just about anything to get an artifact returned to Mexico. What do you mean, anything? That's what I'm not sure of. Well, let's hope he's just a big talker and not a bona fide vigilante. Taylor Sinclair and Alejandro Del Rio have both earned a place on my suspect list. Why? Both admitted to being in the building at the time when the alarm went off. Did they act defensive about it? Not really. They both act as though they have nothing to hide. Do you think they could be working together? Judging by Alejandro's opinion of Taylor, I highly doubt it. But then again, stranger things have happened. Yeah. Like in the 10th grade, when Bess turned purple in the middle of her class presentation on greenhouse gases? George, would you kindly put a sock in it? Somehow, Joanna has gotten the museum into some financial hot water. How'd she do that? Yeah, and how hot's the water? It's all very vague. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. I mean, maybe she just overextended the budget a little in her effort to acquire the best artifacts for the museum, but... But... Even if her intentions were good. She may be feeling a little desperate to make some money back quickly. Desperate enough to steal the Pakal carving, sell it on the black market, and collect the insurance on it too? I know she loves the museum. Who knows what she'd do if she were afraid of losing her job. She's a suspect. Definitely a suspect. Sus. <laughs> Why would the thief keep leaving that awful red handprint at every crime scene? Talk about a creepy trademark. Oh, I'm just glad I haven't seen it. With my sensitive psyche, that type of thing is like a 10-year warranty for nightmares. Does it have any meaning in Maya culture? Not that I know of. Well, somebody ought to know. You're surrounded by experts in Maya culture, for gosh sakes. But maybe it doesn't mean anything at all. Maybe the thief just thinks it's glamorous. Sure. I mean, who really wants anonymity after all? Thieves have to have style. Something to set them apart, right? It's not just any old villain that gets a book deal these days. I'll talk to you later, ladies. Watch out for stale cookies! <laughs> I love talking to our friends. Okay, I've talked to everyone about the theft, so everyone knows. Um, So let's head... Oh, well, let's try the hospital. Maybe he's awake now. I don't know. Aha, uh -huh, we can talk to him. You look familiar. Is it time for my snack? Henrik, it's me, Nancy. You're looking very well. I'm here to help with your memory exercises so you can come back to Beach Hill as soon as possible. Beach Hill? Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. Before your accident, you were working there on some important Maya glyph translations. Do you remember anything about that project? I don't even remember my <laughs> own birthday. So if you're here to squeeze me for details, you're wasting your time. I just love the inflection. I don't even remember my own birthday. <laughs> okay, uh, according to Nurse Bluefoot, you have not actually lost any data. Thinks that regular visits? Actually, Nurse Bluefoot thinks with regular visits, I may be able to help you get your memory back more quickly. How, pray tell, do you intend to do that? I'll visit, we'll talk, sometimes I'll bring you pictures. Pictures? Well, isn't this nice? Think of it this way. You just got back from a fabulous trip, only you can't remember the places you went. So you decide to look through postcards to see which ones you recognize. Fine, I'll do it. Okay, here we go. These symbols mean the magician suffers yellow death. Your translator is sloppy, I should know. I am the author of the original work. You don't agree with the translation? That first glyph is the fool, not the magician. 
Furthermore, any decent epigrapher knows those glyphs refer to the infamous plague of oozing hives. A fitting curse for a fool, don't you think? I rather like it. See, and let's just flash back to that scene uh, where Joanna was like, geez, Nancy, do you think uh, Henrik is the only person that can translate a glyph? And Henrik's over here like, oh, first of all, your translator is so sloppy. If you wrote this note, then you must have stolen the carving of King Pakal. Did you? I don't remember. I'm investigating the theft of the Pakal carving. Please, Henrik, try to remember something. Who in the world is Pakal? Oh, my head. Oh, the pressure. I can't take any more today, Nancy. Okay. It's time for some memory therapy. Nancy, could you come back tomorrow? Hmm, okay. What time is it? Okay, we still have some time. Uh, guess we can go to Beach Hill. <gasps> really? You're an architectural engineer? Oh, wow. What kind of projects do you get to work on? That sounds super fascinating. Oh, I always forget he also voices Brady Armstrong. That's so funny. The only thing I know is probably the temple stuff. We haven't like gone through all of the stuff in the temple. Nothing new here. I need another item before I can do the temple. Come in. Oh, I didn't know you could not. I've just been always going in. Need something? Ah. I need to show Henrik a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Check with Sinclair. Apparently, a Topeka woman named Prudence Rutherford has recently been visited by a red-handed thief, too. Do you have any idea how I might get in touch with her? Afraid I can't help you there. I've got work to do. Carpe diem. Isn't I thought her number was in this magazine we read at the beginning of the stream. Was it not? Oh, there was another page. Oh, there was more pages I didn't know. Where did we stop at? I think we stopped there on that page. You must be referring to that extraordinary jade piece. Tell us about it. My great-grandfather, Ruffleton Rutherford, was one of the premier archaeologists of his day. This jade carving came from one of his most groundbreaking digs. Ooh. Whoops, no pun intended. So this is a real mile artifact. Yes. Any idea of the carving symbolizes? Well, it's a glyph. Snake green cell. No, I actually, I did try and call uh, the cult, the Chaco Canyon, but uh, it just rang the entire time like it wouldn't answer. <laughs> oh, no way. You're working on a large museum that holds priceless artifacts as we speak. Whoa. That's really cool. Oh, so I probably should call them again. Okay, we'll talk to Taylor, and then we'll go back to the hotel, and we'll try and call again. But that's what we need to do. Any news? I need a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Uh, Joanna took the official print for her insurance claim, but I have a couple extras. Here you go. Ah, perfect. Keep up the good work. So we have that. Now let's go back to our hotel. Dun, 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 dun. Man, I love this song. It was a good song. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, good point. I haven't saved in forever. All right. We'll put it right here. I don't even... I don't even... Remember... My own... There we go. <laughs> Alright, now let's try and call the cultural center. It is... So, you say I should try not to put the one in front? I think I have to have the one in front. Let's try that. Mm, I don't think they picked up. I did, I dialed one. But I also tried to do the area code without the one and it didn't take it. Let me try it with nothing. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. I don't know. I don't think I have Prudence number yet. Oh, I didn't you say something about calling Franklin again? Let's see if that's Boswell Jackson and Rose. How may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? I need to contact a woman named Prudence Rutherford. I noticed she's on the board of the Topeka Commission for the Arts and that they've donated money to Beach Hill. Any Bring idea her out. how I might track her down? Bring well, out this you're icon. In luck. It so happens that Prudence and I sat on the <gasps> panel of judges for the Kansas Speak No <laughs> Evil Mime competition for three years in a row. Back when I lived in Wichita. How's that for a small world? You judged a mime competition? Indeed I did. I haven't talked to Prudence in about 10 years. Oh, let me write this Let's number down. Let's see if I still have her in this old dinosaur of a Rolodex. Not a uh, Rolodex? Yes, here we go. Got oh my gosh, it's the nostalgia. It's area code 785-555-7279. What's this all about? Ms. Rutherford had a necklace with a Maya artifact stolen right out of her home. I'm trying to see if there's any connection between these robberies. Ha! <laughs> You're a real pro, Nancy. Why did he laugh? Say, why, did he do that? why don't I call ahead and let Prudence know what's going on? That way I can say hello and she'll be expecting you. Now I think you're reading my mind, Mr. Rose. Thanks. Not a problem, dear. So do I have to give them time to kind of talk on the phone, or can I just go ahead and make this happen? Oh, my bad. I don't think I need the area code. Yeah, we're going to see. Maybe. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed. Do I have to put a one in front of that number? You have reached the villa of Prudence <laughs> Rutherford. As you may have heard, the sanctity of my home has recently been violated. If you've reached this recording, it means I've gone to my quiet place. So please, don't leave a message. You are welcome to try back another time. If you are calling about the Corn Growers Ball, rest assured that the show will go on as scheduled on the 9th. I love her so much. She's like one of my, it's gotta be my top five favorite characters. <laughs> She's so funny. Okay, um. No, I think I gave the handprint to Henrik. 
And I have this other picture for memory that I think that might be for tomorrow. I see something about coming back tomorrow. Oh. No, let's talk to Joanna, and if she doesn't say anything to us, then maybe we should just go ahead and sleep for today. Need something? I've got work to do. Semper ubi sabubi. Yeah. Because there's really... There's nothing... Voicemail. We've done all this. Yeah. I think that's what we probably should do. Because I'm pretty much done in the museum for right now. Man, I don't remember this game at all. Like, I remember the, the highlights, like the big stuff. Man. Too bad. I think Nancy should have a nightmare in this game or some kind of dream like she does in the other ones. All right, let's go straight to the hospital. The nightmare is just Joanna up close to the case. The Mayans love Jade. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> that was so funny. Henrik. My age is 61 and a half. <laughs> Remember like when you were a kid and you're like, I am seven and a half. I am 61 and a half. My marital status is divorced. This this reality now game is a little messy. I don't think they had to have that up there. <laughs> okay, let's talk to him. Well, look who it is. Hi, Henrik. I've come to talk Maya Kings. Let's see if this photo rings any bells. This will help you to remember. That face. He's as familiar as my own feet. Can you remember the last time you saw him? Pakal! Nancy, this is the stolen car oh. thing, isn't it? And I'm the one who took it. I must have. But why? Oh, Pakal! What could I have meant by this? Think, Henrik. Where's the carving now? I can't remember. All I need is some idea of where to look next. I'll take any scrap of memory you've got, Henrik. It's still in the museum. Mm hmm. Are you sure, Henrik? Did you plan? Are you sure, Henrik? Did you plan to sell the Pakal on the black market? To protect him. I had to protect him. Oh, Pakal! Something is going on at that museum. A devious plot. I was the only one who could stand in the way. Where in the museum did you hide the Pakal? Forgive me, Nancy, but when I woke up in this hospital bed, I didn't even know my own name. Perhaps the only thing I can offer you is this key. It was found in one of my pockets when I was brought in. That's important. Do you know what lock it belongs to? I haven't a clue. Take the key now, Nancy. Find out what it opens and return to me, please, with some answers. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. In the meantime, I'll sit with my friend Pakal and see if he will tell me anything new. You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. Do you know anything about the theft of Prudence Rutherford's necklace? I can't remember. Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. Who knows? 
And that's wild. She can just keep asking? Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. You're asking the wrong amnesiac. <laughs> you rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best. Okay, so this key. The only thing I could think the key could be to... I think there were maybe like some display cases that were locked when we first started. And... That's kind of what I'm thinking it could be. Alright, let's go see. Like, wasn't one of... Was it... This one locked? It's locked. It's locked. Oh, uh, it's not do that? Hmm. Is there anything else that's locked? This this is locked, but this looks like the same thing. It's locked. Yeah. Those are not locked. Hmm. Maybe is it somewhere? Oh wait, I remember. Oh my gosh. Some there were two things in here. Or three three things actually, and things were locked. Yeah. Oh, we can't open this? Oh, we can't open that? That's got a code on it. Was it over here? Yeah, this thing. Oh, we can't open this either? I guess we can only look at it for the numbers. God, that was locked. <gasps> Aha. It's a disc. A hundred megabyte disc. It's like nothing. What about down here? Translations notes continued. Blessing, curse, curse. Perhaps summon spirit death similar... Captive, house captive, house prison. Was a prisoner. Ah. Bring down or break destroy. Broken earth, four corners, pages. Two. Fascinating. This title, very familiar with Call, of course, but not like any I've ever seen. Wait, where have I seen this? Hmm. Coffin emblem has been modified with a rabbit head, similar to the rabbit. Bought for more card labor. Interesting. Ah, the ham radio. Oh, thank you so much, Abby. Well, you have a great rest of your day. I'm so glad we got to catch up, chat for a bit. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Number stations, okay. Transmits a series of five digits in Spanish with each transmission starting with Atención, Atención. Write down the last three digits of the series and add a zero to it to get a four digit number. Add each of the original five digits and add the sum to the four digit number from the first step. This is the first station that the smugglers will take messages on. If the station number gives 56123, then the smuggler station is 1247. Put a zero at the end of the last three digits. Oh, okay, one, two, three, zero. Add all of the digits in the series, five, six, one, two, three, equals 17. Add the number from step one to the number from step two. So 1230 plus 17 is 1247. Oh. Password is the new hot two word for snake. Enter it in Morse code and they'll confirm by voice. Then send a code word. Leche means send the item immediately. Mujer means meet me at the rendezvous point. Sueño, don't send the item in the vacas. Payment has been sent. 
So how do we know what the station number is? Hmm, looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl. Oh, we have to go to this station? What was it, 20, 2050? numbers and go ahead and at least add this up, right? So put a zero at the end of the last three. So two, seven, one, zero. Add all of the digits in the series. Eight, three, 11, plus two is 13, plus seven is 20, 21. Add the number from step one. Two, seven is nine, plus one is 10, so 10. That was the first number. That was the second number. And then add the number from step one to the number from step two. Is it two seven two seven three one? And then let and then milk. So we just have to find the snake. But Alejandro would know that, so we just have to talk to him, right? No. Alejandro! Alright, let's go talk to Alejandro. Get the word we need. Buenos dias. Oh, I haven't told him about Henrik? Have you heard? Henrik Vanderhoon fell off the pyramid at the museum. He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. That is terrible news. I hope it's not too serious. <laughs> Nancy completely changed the subject. Anyways, I need to know what the word for snake is. I need to know is. the Nahuatl word for <laughs> snake. That's Can so you help funny. me? What do you need that word for? Should I just be honest? Just be honest. Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory, too. Oh. Something tells me this translation is going to come with strings attached. I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. Ooh, I have to sneak in the office? What makes you think they were falsified? In Mexico, it is common knowledge that the carving was stolen from Pakal's tomb when it was first excavated. But no one has been able to prove it. If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, this will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork, whenever and wherever it resurfaces. Uh, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. <laughs> Do you know what Sihuapili means? Princess or lady. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I should get back uh -huh. to the museum. Adios, Nancy. Right. He just learned this. I just told him. So there's that. Oh, and we need to look at this disc. Let's do that too. And then we can change the time to nighttime, go sneak in the museum, steal the document from uh, uh, Joanna's office. Ha 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 ha. All right. 
Okay. <gasps> no. What's pass? What is that password for? Oh. Can I look at his notes? It won't let me look at his notes. Oh no. Want we'll to talk to Henry again? Is it time for that? I think he said he was done for today, right? Thank you. Yes, right? So many things have changed because we have technology now, including our puzzles. That's so funny. Oh, he is dead asleep. I think I may have to go to... What? What do I go back for? What do I go back for? What are you talking about? Oh, is that what those are for? Nancy, turn around. <laughs> that makes sense. We'll put the notes on his board. sir just kind of absorb that get it in your memory think about it chew on it marinate on it we'll talk again tomorrow but right now i gotta sneak into the museum and i have to steal some documents from the museum that i work at be a great time to go to the museum. Probably like 9 o'clock at night. She's not going to be there at 9. Can, does these it's keys work? Ah, uh, no. Well. In the wise words of Andy Jason. Ah, nuts. <laughs> well, it's past my bedtime, so I guess we can just sleep. We can just sleep it off. Really? Oh yeah, I forgot we gotta call Prudence too. I don't know, is it really that late? Do you think she'd answer? What was her number? Yes, hello? <gasps> she answered! Hi, this is Nancy Drew, calling from Washington, D.C. I'm trying to reach Prudence Rutherford, please. Oh, yes. Franklin told me you'd be calling. Such dreadful news about Beach Hill. <laughs> I will do everything in my power to help you catch those rapscallions. Rapscallions. Think how they violated the sanctity of my domicile. Good heavens. <gasps> okay, but I love the idea that I'm calling her at 9 o'clock at night. And I can just totally see her in her her hair rollers, and she's in her robe, clutched to the phone, being super dramatic. Ah, catch those ripped scallions! <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about your loss. What can you tell me about the necklace? I can't even think about it. 
Oh, just the very thought of my precious necklace gone, stranded, orphaned, and in the hands of some dirty stranger makes my blood boil. Was the necklace a gift? I inherited it from my mother-in-law. But you see, the necklace means much more to me than just a handful of priceless rubies. More? In what way? I had the necklace restrung to include an exquisite jade carving as a centerpiece, a genuine artifact of the ancient Maya. The carving is not only one of a kind, but a Rutherford family heirloom given to me by my great-grandfather when I was just a little girl. Hmm. Does the carving have any meaning that you know of? It features a rare glyph. No one's been able to give me a precise translation, but most epigraphers have agreed that it has something to do with a snake, oh, the color green, and the direction south. It's terribly fascinating. Do you think the thief or thieves had any idea of what they were stealing? Oh, they must have known. The rest of my valuables were left untouched. Frankly, I don't know whether to be grateful or insulted. What about evidence? The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was this positively ghoulish red handprint on the wall. I nearly jumped out of my skin. A red handprint was left at the scene of the crime at Beach Hill, too. Ms. Rutherford, I'm almost certain that these robberies were committed by the same person. But mm -hmm. why? What is so special about these carvings? Um, Miss Rutherford, I'd like you to meet Beach as a prayer. <laughs> is there any chance you could fly out to Washington for a few days? Yeah, we need a picture. Miss Rutherford, it would be so helpful if I knew exactly what your carving looked like. Could you send me a picture that shows it in detail? I can do better than a photo. The insurance company made this dreadful replica of the necklace with the idea that I would wear such a thing to public functions. Please! But <laughs> I could send that to you, if you'd like. Perfect. Let me give you the address. My secretary will have the address of the museum. Now, if that is all you will require, young lady, I will need to attend to other pressing matters. Thanks a like million, Ginger. Ms. Rutherford. I won't let you down. Call me Ginger. Prudence. Oh, and Nancy... When you find the villains who did this to me, do me a favor and give them a sound thrashing. <laughs> You're coming through loud and clear. So Bye. Things are so great. No, I don't know that song. All right. Let's go night night. Time to go night night. Photo. <laughs> She's the best. All right, I say we just go ahead and hop on over to the hospital. Because if we do that, we can go ahead and knock out our memory therapy with Henrik. Aha, oh, what's this? What is this? A cur oh, that's his password. A curse upon you who beholds his terror. The evil deeds of the Whisper of Silent Secrets remains undead within this prison of root. What? Broken only when the four corners of the world are bound together. When the first king ascends the throne again. When the last coping fool has labored at the end. Oh, so stone. Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. What have you remembered? I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. There's Henrik's password. This has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. What is the prison of stone? It's a tomb. Pakal called it a prison because it was designed to prevent the Whisperer's soul from entering the underworld. Why did Pakal want to imprison the Whisperer's soul? The Whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name, but I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. 
What did the scribe say? That Pakal had bad fashion? From the age of 12, when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic king of the Maya. Then the whisperer came along and wrote that Pakal was only king because his mother pulled some strings. Mm -hmm. It was quite a blow to Pakal's image. So he put her in a stone prison? Pakal swore that the whisperer's words would never see the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings all in a tomb and locked it up tight. Wait, Henrik, a prison of stone? We're not talking about the monolith, are we? That's the idea. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Do you think the monolith can be opened? Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. Do you think there is anyone I can trust? Please don't breathe a word of this. There's too much at stake. I don't suppose you have a Nahuatl word for snake floating around in your memory bank somewhere, do you? Who knows? Okay, you we have a password. Up. I'll be back. So I'll do my best. I think we should go... Can I actually take that? Oh, I can. Oh, perfect. So it must be time for that too. So I need to go back to the hotel. Snoop around. No, because no, I don't have Henrik's password. Stoop. Talk, probably talk to Franklin too. Probably talk to him about all the things that have transpired. Yeah, no, I don't know where that's from. Tell me, so tell me where it's from. I actually don't know. It's cool. Well, let's actually do the disc first. Stone. A curse upon you who beholds this terror. The evil deeds of the whisper of silent secrets remain undead within this prison of stone broken only when the four corners of the world are bound together when the first king ascends to the throne again when the last coping fool has labored till the end of time what is all this prison of stone the prison bears an intricate lock oh Six separate keys must be assembled to fit the lock. Look at the riddle. Four corners of the world plus fool and king equals six. Each must represent one interlocking part of a bigger key. A cube has six sides. Perhaps they fit together into a cube. But where are these keys and what do they look like? Must track them now before it's too late. Someone knows about this. Oh, and these must be each of the keys. Okay. I see, so north. Artifacts found as far as north as the mix. Numerous pieces lost in recent. Oh, we need to call them. So we've talked to Rutherford. She's sending us a picture of that. The Maya were great astronomer, astronomers. Research record shows one Bishop Diego de Landa found a strange jade carving. Where could this be the east key? Oh, let's, we got to talk to him too. Six oh five 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 three one nine five. Okay, Copenfull. Reports from Dig are good. Found jade carving with rabbit glyph. Radio for delivery. Aha. I need to place the Pakal in a safe place. I cannot trust anyone at this time, moral dilemma, but can I argue that the end justifies the means and I need to send a loud and clear message to the culprit racing to open the monolith alongside me. I only hope that I can win this round. Okay, so that's super interesting. Okay, so Copen Fool has to, we have to radio for delivery. We can call him the East. Who's Bishop Diego de Landa? Hmm. Context? Ah, so Honduras. 
Oh, that's the Copen one? Yeah, that's the one we have to radio. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So let's talk to Franklin. Ooh, this is interesting. We are getting some interesting stuff right now. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. How may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Oops. False alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. Not a problem, dear. So we didn't have to talk to him. Can we please, can we finally call? The cultural center? No, it still won't let us. Can we call Daddle? Daddle residents. Uh -huh. Hi, may I speak to Henry Daddle, please? Speaking. Mr. Daddle, my name is Nancy Drew. This is a long shot, but I'm calling regarding a Maya artifact that was bought at auction in 1898 by one Henry Albert Daddle. Does that ring any bells? Sure. Henry Albert Daddle Sr. was my great grandfather. Oh my gosh. It's Ned. You're talking about the jade carving, right? Yes, exactly. Wow, I can't believe my luck. Well, it's a lucky life if you ask me. So what can I do for you? Um, yeah. I'm investigating a recent rash of thefts around the country involving similar Maya artifacts. Any information you could give me about the one your great-grandfather bought would be very helpful. I see. Well, I was the last to inherit the carving, but my daughter Penelope was so intrigued with it that I gave it to her. I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you about it. Why don't you give her a call on her line? It's 555-3197. Will do. Thanks, Mr. Daddle. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh-huh. I guess let's talk to Penelope, a.k.a. Poppy Jada. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed <gasps> Why? as child. Please check the... Did I write it down wrong? We're sorry. Oh, you six oh five two. Ah. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hello. Hi, is this Penelope? Not even. Oh, is this six oh five 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 three one nine seven? Yeah, but no one calls me Penelope anymore. Except my parents, that is. To my friends, the art world, and anyone else who made it out of the 20th century, I'm Poppy. The art world? Poppy. Wait, you're not Poppy Dada, are you? Ta-da! Ping, ping! You win! Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a detective. A detective? No way! So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross, creepy stuff like that? Actually, I try to keep a low profile, and a tweed hat, well, it's a little conspicuous. So, where'd you get my name? Don't tell me I'm, like, wanted by the FBI or something. That would be too scandalous. <laughs> Not quite. Taylor Sinclair told me about you. I saw one of your paintings in his office here in Washington, D.C. So, how do you know Big Bunny Sinclair? <laughs> I'm sorry? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Did you say Big Bunny? Oops. Just a little nickname I accidentally found out about. He made me promise to abolish it from my memory. Anyway, about your acquaintance, you were saying... Taylor and I are both affiliated with Beach Hill Museum, also in D.C. Has Taylor been pushing those Oaxacan cookies on you? You haven't eaten one, have you? 
So far, I've managed to politely decline. I take it you advise against them? Let's put it this way. His trip to Oaxaca was about two years ago, and he's been trying to move those <laughs> rancid lard biscuits ever since. Aha! My suspicions are confirmed. I'll put that in my case notes. That's hot. What's a case? Are there dead bodies involved? Do you need to, like, tap my phone or impersonate me or something? Before I get into that, tell me about the artwork you do. It looks very interesting. It's a new form I made up myself. I approach each piece as a synesthetic, interactive, organic journey. That sounds a lot more complicated than, say, painting or drawing. Have you heard the saying that a work of art is never finished, just abandoned? Well, I'm taking that idea to the limit by making art that will keep changing as different people encounter, perceive, and interact with it. I'm tired of artwork that says, don't touch. I'm all about letting go, about sending my work into the world and seeing how it continues to become. But you wouldn't advocate, say, drawing a mustache on the Mona Lisa, would you? Ugh, oh, don't get me started on art. Now, what's your name again? Oh, yeah, Nancy. Let's have the dish. Who are you after? The Chinese mafia? No mafia that I know of. African elephant poachers? No, no elephants involved. South American drug lords? Not this time. A sinister counterfeiting ring right here in Vermilion? Am I even getting warm? There was a robbery at Beach Hill, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. This thief is after something big, and I've got to figure out what it is. Drama. <laughs> so, where do the daddles come in? I'm trying to track down certain Maya Jade carvings that haven't fallen into the thief's hands yet. I think one of them might be in your family. You mean that ancient green rock with the weird symbol on it? I slapped some shoe polish on it and stuck it in one of my paintings. Huh? You're kidding. That's a one-of-a-kind Maya artifact, a piece of history. It's hundreds of years Can old. Can you imagine, it's worth like, a lot of you money. put that That's on the your whole painting? That's point. Don't you see? It's and an it organic process. to be process. something, like, incredibly important I in mean, history. How can people really relate to art if it doesn't come to life and, and, and grow and die just like they do? That carving is part of something bigger now. It seems awfully reckless to me, not to mention the wrench it throws into my investigation. Oh, Nancy, don't be such a prude. Taylor's probably still got that artwork. At least, I don't think he sold it yet. Why don't you ask him? Tell him you want to see the piece called Deadly Midnight Snack. It's the one with the rubber shark. The one with the rubber shark? Yes, I've seen it, but I didn't notice any jade carving. Well, take a closer look there, sweets. It's in there. If you really need the carving to crack this case, why don't you just go ahead and take it? But wouldn't it ruin your painting? Of course not. After all, this is a chance to enact exactly what I've been talking about. The organic process. Inviting my viewers to interact with my work. The deal is... You can take the carving, but you have to put something in its place. I can choose anything? A light bulb? A magnifying glass? A pair of headphones? No, it should be something more organic. Stay with the title, Deadly Midnight Snack. And don't be afraid to go way out. As an artist, I can tell you that inspiration bites in the most mysterious ways. I'll do my best. Right on. <laughs> but let's keep Taylor out of this. He'd probably blow a gasket if he saw you tampering with the merchandise. That's all art is to him, you know. Merchandise. It's a deal. Good luck, Nancy. Thanks, Bobby. Bye. Okay. Yeah, no, so I've been calling the cultural place um, in the morning, actually, I think. Yeah. I don't know if maybe I should call on the, the phone at the Beach Show Museum. Let's go see Taylor. Oh, it has to be the hotel. Room. Taylor Sinclair's office. Any news? Do you have any idea what the Nahuatl word for snake is? I don't know. Mind if I help myself to one of those scrumptious looking Oaxacan cookies? Be my guest. 
Ah, uh, what'd she call it? A, a rancid lard biscuit. <laughs> May I take a closer look at that wacky Dada painting? Be my guest. I just had a call from Poppy this morning. She says she's in a really creative period right now. I said, please, sweetie, if you get any more creative, they're going to lock you up. <laughs> uh, pardon me a moment, Nancy. I'll be right back. I hope. <gasps> Did he have to go run to the bathroom? Was that an emergency bathroom break? Poppy said to replace it with something organic. <laughs> that's what... <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Serious music. Yo, pass me one of those rancid lard biscuits. Wait, go back. Okay, we have one. Thank you. I know I'm so sad. That would have been like the best thing ever. Uh. Alright, let's talk to Joanna. Come in. Need something? I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Any ideas? Afraid I can't help you there. I've got work to do. Carpe diem. So nobody knows that. Alright, I'm trying to keep up with which one's which. This one is going to be uh, the dottle one. But doesn't it need to trigger that I need to use this? Lard biscuits. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, I've got a graph of the chemical used for the handprint. Now I've got to match it up with a known substance. Is it? I don't think it's changing. That's it. HGS. So, is that mercury sulf sulfa something? SG. According to this chart, HG stands for mercury. What about the S? Or was that it? S stands for ah, sulfur. So, the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur. Interesting developments. Okay, I've called. You have no voicemail. Everybody but I still have yet to get in contact. Talk to Joanna. Okay. Oh. Need something? Oh. I did the chemical analysis you suggested. That red hand was printed with a compound containing mercury and sulfur. Does that mean anything to you? Sure, sure, cinnabar. The Maya would rub it into their most important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? We use cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. 
The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. I've got work to do. Go to it. And that's really all I remember. I think, I wonder if, oh, oh yeah, we had just talked to Joanna. Yes, about Cinnabar being used in the museum. So we probably want to call someone about that. This is one of your favorites to replay. I am loving it. Like, it is probably like my third or fourth time playing the game ever. And it is just, I'm appreciating it. The wazoo out of it. I'm loving it. Rynan. Rynan Lick? Rynan Lick. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I was saying it correctly. <laughs> um, you have no voicemail. Press but who do we want to call? Can I call Silvio Jr. back or he's is he going to be mad at me? Oh, right here. Mer Mercuric Sulfide. Mac. That's who we need to talk to. He is at 202-555-6766. Sweet. Okay. You have no voicemail. Oh, can you really? <laughs> Keep it real. Max speaking. <laughs> Hello. Hi, do you sell a compound of mercury and sulfur? Mercuric sulfide? Oh, we sure do. How much do you need? Uh, first things first. What accounts this for? Well, the account number is B-H-O-O-H-P, but I'm not sure if we need any. Well, hello there, B-2. Hey, you're not Sunny June. Whatever happened to that guy? I suppose he caught a ride on a flying saucer, eh? <laughs> what a riot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, you don't need to reorder, do you? Unless you ate last week's shipment for breakfast, that is. Um, you sure it was last week? You're sure it was last week? Oh, that's what it says here. Do you know who placed that order? Well, the initials on the order are JR. Interesting. So there hasn't been a holdup at the distributor or anything like that? Holdup? Oh, I don't know where you heard that. We've got enough mercuric sulfide in-house to sink a ship. Was the package shipped to the museum? Uh... Oh? Oops, I guess we didn't ship it at all. It looks like the package was picked up here at the warehouse. Can you remember anything about the person who picked up the package? Hmm. Uh, I sure can't. Guess I must have been at lunch or something. Well, thanks hmm. for your help. Sure thing. I hope there wasn't any problem with the stuff, was there? We only used a top-grade mercuric sulfide. Problem? Uh, not that I could hold you responsible for. Well, you sound a little green in the chemicals department, if you don't mind my saying so. I hope you know that mercuric sulfide is highly toxic. Makes you crazy. Well, I have heard that mercury poisoning can cause hallucinations and other symptoms of psychosis. Oh, uh, uh, looks like I've got another call coming in here. <laughs> you give us a call in about four months or so when you start to run out, okie doke? And don't forget to keep it real. Okay, I am so interested now to call Silvio because you guys say that it's possible. So we have got to do that. It never occurred to me either that you could call Silvio back. You have no All right. Five, 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 nine, nine, six, three. Silvio's. <laughs> I'm like nervous. Like I'm doing a prank call. <laughs> Do you know how, how much offhand we owe you? This is Nancy Drew. Uh, do you know offhand how much we owe you? I thought I told you to beat it. Silvio Jr. is through with the whole lousy bunch of you. Oh. Okay, so you can keep calling him back? That's hilarious. Okay, so I guess let's go talk to Joanna. And see what she has to say about this.
Need something? I've got work to do. Mm, Bye. Nothing. Okay. Um, the only other thing I could think we could do in this one is we could try the ham radio. Because I don't think we did that. We did figure out the... No oh, we never figured out what the word was. We don't have the word. Yeah. Hmm. We could call Franklin again. You have now boy Did you really? Yeah, I've been having an urge for this game lately because I feel like this is a great season for museuming. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. How may I direct your call? Oh, this is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Oops, false alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. Not a problem, dear. Okay, so never mind. I guess let's go see Alejandra. I hope you know because this game has so many times where someone falls off a, like a monolith cliff temple thing and the police show up because someone stole something that I literally get so anxious every time I walk out the the door <laughs> I keep thinking something's gonna happen <laughs> secret of the scarlet concussion <laughs> okay hello ah do you know what cinnabar is do you know is? what cinnabar is the red powder that the Maya used? Sure, I know it. They use it at Beach Hill too, do they not? They do use it at the museum, but Joanna told me they haven't been able to get any in a while. What is your point? Joanna said the museum didn't have any, but the supplier said she ordered some last week. Have you called the police? I don't want to jump to conclusions. Of course. Sister Joanna couldn't possibly be a thief now, could she? I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, we talked to him. So I think we've talked to everyone. Maybe not Taylor Sinclair. Any news? I'd better get going. See you around. Oh. Do you know if it was echoing earlier, Renelic? Yeah, Renelic. Like earlier today when we were playing? Or is this new? We can try talking to Joanna about it. Oh, she's not here. Oh, so we can snoop around her stuff. Nice. Really? That's so weird. I have not changed a thing. Huh. I can always like close out of our game too and open it again. See if that helps it. Okay. This is the cultural museum. Join a rig's director. 
covered bowl, ceramic. Figurine with bird head? Aha, <gasps> uh -huh, there's the key. I think that was the key to the exhibit that we were we were needing, right? Province stocks? King Pakal carving. Side of excavation unknown, year of excavation unknown, first known record of ownership. Huh. Transfer of title Pakal carving. Rupert Starr hereby transfers title of the Pakal carving to the Serpentine Gallery. The carving is given in exchange for 37% ownership of the gallery. That's so much money. Dear Taylor, as you may have heard, my longtime clients, Felix and Miranda Peterson, both passed away this summer in the heat wave. Felix was 89 and Miranda was 91, and by all accounts, they had lived extraordinary full lives. Still, it's too bad their air conditioning unit went on the blink when it did. I and all the citizens of Greenwich will miss them dearly. As you know, the Petersons had no children. Per their instructions, I am to arrange the auction of their estate and donate the proceeds to charity. As you may also know, the Petersons had a fabulous art collection, including several pre-Columbian artifacts that may be of particular interest to you. The auction will be held on February 7th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially the older games, for me, they are so much more trickier to stream. I have to, like, reconfigure them every time I have to stream an old game. <gasps> Taylor Sinclair! I just took the whole folder. Oh, that feels so illegal. Okay, I think that was every... Oh, here's a map. Cool. Yeah, I think that was everything. I feel like I, that was all the important things I need to look at, right? Nothing over here. Really? So it's literally just the voices? Okay, so just out of curiosity, hold on. Can I save here? Documents. I'm gonna see if I can just like reopen it and maybe see if that just makes a difference. <laughs> maybe. You see how it's like blown up my desktop so I can fit the game? Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure it's probably too late to go see Alejandro. Let's see. Oh, no, he's still there. Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? Here's your file, as requested. 
Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? I trust your Nahuatl has become fluent again. The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C-O-A-T-L. <laughs> okay. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Really? That's so weird. I'm gonna have to, like, look more into that. Okay, let's go back to the museum. And see if we can do this. Weird. Hello! Susie! Raiding with a party of seven! Woo! <laughs> Oh, well, that's actually, it's on my list of things to do for Nostalgic Monday. That's why it's been sitting there for so long. Um. Okay, we should be able to do this now. So. The radio tube went out. <gasps> you are kidding me. This better be a joke. <laughs> wow. Okay, wait. Suze, you know what's funny? I like, I'm so glad that I have cat emotes and I have Lilo emotes filling the chat right now. <laughs> Nancy, the police called. They want me to go down to the station for further questioning. Something about an anonymous tip. Ugh. Do I have time for this? No. Hold down the fort while I'm gone, will you please? I left my office open if you need anything. Be back soon. Okay. No, I was going to say, there's a radio thing. Yeah. Oh, that's the microscope, doctor. Yeah, I was hoping that maybe we could call them. The museum has my solution. I did, I'm mustacheless now. All right, let's go read about ham radios. Oh wait, no, we have the key now. Oh. That was, that was good. Nancy kind of stole though, but it's for a good cause. <laughs> okay. And we're police. No, close it. All right, ooh, 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 ooh. let's go ham radio, people. Two, seven, three, one. Oh, do I send it? What is it supposed to, oh, I connect. Oh, okay. What do I do? Oh no, I forgot. I have to get the Morse code for the word. For the, for the, uh. oh, hold on. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't think I read, oh, I never read this. Hiked with Big Bunny all day. Temperatures in the hundreds. Water scarce, but Highland region is beautiful and pristine except for Bunny's incessant commentary. I never saw this earlier. Oh, now we know who they're talking about. Cross paths with an old shim shaman today. Eager for some relief from Big Bunny. Accepted old man's invitation to eat. Old man. 
gave us very strong tea, to which Big Bunny reacted negatively. He kept shouting, Bunny rabbits flaming bunny rabbits. Return of the repress. Once he even pounced on the floor to try and catch one, but there was nothing there. Vicente thought this was very funny. I nearly expired from embarrassment. Tea had no usual unusual effect on me. At the height of Bacall's reign, a royal Maya scribe, Spoopily Macaulay. Would have enjoyed this story much more without the unwanted outburst of my foolish sidekick. Quite a tale, though. Amazing that it survived some hell. Big Bunny wants to start a small time smuggling. <gasps> oh. I mean, like, it tells you, it basically tells you right here. Like, it tells you right here what's going on. But I do need some way to fund my own studies. I wonder if I could stand it. Travels today have been uneventful. Sun is hotter than ever. Tomorrow we return to base camp. I cannot wait to be rid of my companion. Suspect he is really a dog in a bunny clothing. Interesting. Okay, let's look at this. Isn't this where the Morse code was? Or was it somewhere else? Ah, oh, is it this? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so I actually, I only had a few hours to stream earlier this afternoon and I told everyone, I was like, hey, don't worry, I will come back later. And we will we will finish this game out. So now we're fishing. Oh. Wait, what was the word again that Alejandro told us? Does anyone remember? I forgot to write it down. Oh, okay. Coatl. So it's dash dot dash dot. O is just three dashes. A is a dot and a dash. T is just a dash. And L is dot dash dot dot. So what does it say when you're doing it? When you have finished composing a letter, press send. So I have to do one letter at a time. Okay. All right, let's go try it. Ha ha ha. What? Oh, for leche too, don't I? Oh, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> Man, you guys have been saving me this whole game. That's right, okay, L is... E is just a dot. And then H is dot 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 dot. Oh. Alright, now let's do it. This is where we do the Morse code, right? So C. It worked. Okay. Just a dash and then L. Mensaje encendido. Transmítalo ahora. And 
this is where we do leche? All we had to do? Man, I feel like such a detective right now. Huzzah, huzzah. <laughs> Can I just turn it off? Sweet. Okay, so now we just have to wait for mail. And didn't Prudence say she was also going to send us a package? I think she did. Did we get it? We did not. Okay, so we're waiting on two pieces of mail, right? My question, though, is where do we get the other jade pieces? I know in, Hen in Henrik's notes... He said one of them was supposed to come from the cultural center that we have tried to call <laughs> so many times. Yes, Chuckle Canyon. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm gonna try. Oh, we have. This is your wee try. We have tried. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many times. What was their number again? Answered. The center is now closed. Regular hours are from 10 oh. a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week, except on major national holidays, when we are closed. Oh, finally. Do you know how long we've been waiting for that this whole stream? In combination with the stream from earlier? <laughs> All right, let's wake up and 10. I will never stop dancing to this song. It's so good. Okay. Fingers crossed. Chaco Canyon Cultural yeah, Center. Yeah, you Hi, I'm hoping to speak to someone about the we did theft it. that happened there recently. Are you the press? No, I'm a detective investigating a similar crime in Washington, D.C. This is Sheila Schultz, the director. What would you like to know? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from the Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I understand you had some rare Maya artifacts stolen recently. That's right. It's a terrible loss. And the police here have no leads. Beach Hill was robbed, too. We lost one of our prized jade carvings. I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm wondering if the robberies are connected. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident at Chaco Canyon? Fire away. Okay. Um, red handprint. I heard the thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. Is that true? Yes. It was very gruesome. It looked like blood. But according to the police analysis, the print was made with a mercuric sulfide paste. She sounds paste. like Fatima. <laughs> this is Fatima, isn't it? I can hear it in her voice. Do you know of any symbolic meaning attached to a red hand? Don't walk. Don't go there. Talk to the hand, as my 15-year-old would say. Really? I haven't the slightest idea. All right, bye, Morgan. I hope you have a great rest of your night. So good to hang out with you. Uh, so the thief cleaned out an entire display case. 
Yeah. What types of artifacts did the thief get away with? Only the center's most prized pieces. The case contained five pre-Columbian artifacts that were excavated right from this area. Do you have a list of the stolen pieces? I know those pieces like the back of my hand. There were three pottery pieces, a small stone figurine with a snake head, and an ornamental jade carving. Mm. I'm interested in the jade carving. What did it look like? It was highly unusual. There was a glyph on it that no one could translate. Until we hired Henrik Vanderhune, that is. His opinion was that it's Mayan in origin, and that it may have been a place name glyph for this area. As you can imagine, we regarded it as something of a regional treasure. Do you know that Henrik Vanderhune works for Beach Hill now? Yes, I know. His departure was a great loss for us. Was Henrik still working at Chaco Canyon when the theft occurred? No. It happened just a few days after he left. I remember because after the police left, the staff and I were so depressed, we went into the lounge and pigged out on the rest of Henrik's farewell cake. <laughs> was Henrik on good terms with Chaco Canyon when he left? Well, it was awfully abrupt. As soon as he heard about that monolith, boom, he was gone. For some reason, he just had to go study it. We weren't exactly happy about it, but it's not like quitting is against the law. Do you recall having some appraisal work done by an art dealer by the name of Taylor Sinclair? How could I forget? He went on and on about the impossibly rare artifacts he could get for us. I said, are you an art dealer or a smuggler? Uh, but he assured me that the provenance documents would all be in order. She's asking the real questions out here. I never did any further business with him. He just seemed slippery. Mm -hmm. Could you send me a photo of that jade carving so I can take a look at the glyph? I'm afraid I sent our only print off to the insurance company. They said they'd return it, but who knows when our claim will be processed. I'm sorry. I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? Not off the top of my head, but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around. Can you call back later? Sure thing. Feel free to call if you have any more questions. Okay, so we have to call her back. But this is good. She'll help us out. Um, who else should- Oh, we haven't talked to Henrik in a while. Should we talk to him? Pacal made a six-part key to the Whisperer's tomb and scattered the pieces around the world. Do you remember anything about this? Six keys? Six keys? Six keys! Nancy, what are the four corners of the world? North, south, east, and west. Plus the first king, Pakal himself, and the Copan fool. When they're all assembled, they open the tomb. Don't you see? This is why I stole the Pakal, to prevent some other schemer from putting the key together. Hmm. Maybe I'd better tell Joanna what's going on. You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. One of the pieces that was stolen from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center was a jade carving with an unusual glyph on it. Do you remember translating it? I can't remember. Did you use Joanna's name last week to place an order for Cinnabar with Keep It Real Restoration? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You wouldn't try to frame her, would you? Who knows? <laughs> Have you ever been part of a smuggling racket? I don't know. You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best. Yeah, I have to, like, think about that because I'm not really sure exactly how I want to do it yet. 
Because I'm not like, I don't know, like, I don't want too many sound redeemables because they're always there on the stream. So like, I don't know, like, I gotta think, I don't know, I gotta think about it though. I don't know, I gotta think about it. That is my, that is my goal to think about it and come up with some ideas though. Okay. Where to next? So we talked to him. Maybe... And we still gotta wait on her to call back. Alright, can we, can we talk to Joanna? She didn't give us her number though. she gave us her number we can't call her hey did you know this mug right here this is so this is so funny because i was literally just looking at this when i was making that warnings at waverly academy uh quiz on my instagram this is the same mug that rachel hubbard has in her room Yeah, like, see, yeah, that I agree. That's my only thing is that, like, sometimes I, I get invested in the games and I don't really want to be so distracted by all the sound alerts. Although they're really fun, I just thought maybe, like, if I'm going for a chaotic vibe, I would love to have sound redeemables, but not all the time. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, yes, but not all the time. Oh, wasn't there another exhibit I could open or something? I think that's why I've also been so slow to do it, because I'm just- Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this thing. Because I'm just trying to, like, figure out if that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. I like those, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, I gotta think about, like, fun ones. But I don't know. <laughs> I do like those, though. Wow, these are heavy! Well, put them back. Don't pick them up. Oh no! Nancy, put him back down! <laughs> I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. Now, Nancy, I told you to put those down. These calendar stones are getting too heavy. I uh, can't hold on to them <laughs> any longer. Oh no! Oh. Uh oh. Girl Sleuth drops, it breaks heavy, priceless relic. <laughs> I'm not Second. sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. We'll put them down. I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. Yeah, actually, how do you put them back down? Because I'm trying to put them back down and it won't let me. <gasps> yeah, no, really. How do I put them back down? Oh guys, I'm gonna forever be carrying calendar stones. Just put them on the monolith? Wait, is that- I'm not I can... sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. I've got I... to put these things down. Wait, where, where do they go? What monolith? This thing? Oh. Oh, right there. Looks like this side is missing a part. Hello, Emma Lambs! Raiding with a party of 25. What's up? Welcome to Secret of the Scarlet Hand. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The poem said, when the first king ascends again. Well, actually, no, I think we still have a couple jade pieces to find. <coughs> oh, you just finished Kapu Cave. No way. Oh, that's a good question. 
And it's so hard for me to rank. Oh my gosh. Well, you know my favorite's Danger on Deception Island. I can at least answer that question. And usually my bottom ones always rank about the same as everyone else's. It's like... Uh, Midnight in Salem. Uh, I don't know. Wait, do you not like Deception Island? No! I love Deception Island. I love that one. That's so funny. <laughs> I seriously love it. Danger on Deception Island so much. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh no. No, I, I, it's one of my favorites. I think it's like a cozy favorite. That's probably why. Well, you know what? I bet you we could we could probably go ahead and call the cultural center back, right? It's been enough time. What time is it? 12.30. They've probably already had lunch and there, it's time for me to call back. Yeah, no, same. I want to go to the San Juan Islands. You know they have a legit, a legit whale museum that they base the whale museum off of that gameplay? Okay, I, I I totally agree with you. Now I'm biased because it's was my fa it was my first game. That's why I love it. But I I have never shied away from the fact that I agree that the puzzles are lacking, and that there are it it is not the best like as far as like chore puzzle. It's yeah, it's just not. <laughs> okay, let's call that number back. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. Well, we racked our brains. Finally, one of my staff came up with the original box that the carving was packed yeah. in. Yeah. The piece was encased in a tight foam cast to prevent damage during shipping. I'm not sure how much good it'll do you, but I can send it to you if you like. That just might work. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address, so I know what to do. I'll send it express. Thanks a million, Sheila. Good luck with your investigation. Yeah, I totally get that. Wait a minute, whoa. I did not know they had a hot kettle cafe. Are you serious? Like that was legit? All right, everyone, dance break. This is my favorite song. best song okay back to what we were doing no seriously this they I don't know why they had to go so stinking hard on this track for real okay what are we doing we're waiting on mail there's, there's so many so many tasks where you have to wait that I, they all get mixed in my head. Oh, that's right. Thank you. The temple quiz. That's right. See, I got too many thoughts going on right now. To be a museum curator, I would I probably would not be a good curator. I'm too like. <laughs> I didn't even know I had the information for that yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what have we not finished? It was this computer, right? <gasps> we have to go back through these? Oh, no! Okay. Do you, do you guys remember what is the name 
of one of Shield Jaguars. Oh, gosh. Tori is coming in clutch. Which Maya monster represents? Oh, I know this one. It's the Bicephalic Crocodile. That's a nice children's story. What did the Maya call a decorative woven blouse? <laughs> what is a Kahal? Oh, I know this. It's a nobleman. Aha, what is the name of a Maya matchmaker? Wait, when did we learn this? It's in Henry Sticks. Oh. I remember reading that, but I did not know that. I'm glad y'all know this stuff. All right. The maze? What maze? I thought we did everything down here. Was it, was it this one? Yeah, what is it? Do you guys know? Where, where, or where did I, where was I supposed to find that at? I don't remember finding this. It's S. June? Is it Coco? Oh, it's Space Baby? Oh. Wait, how do I get to the bottom? Space Baby. <gasps> what the heck? What? What in the 1994? What is this? This is like the message in a haunted mansion maze. Oh, this is wild. Oh, this is so trippy. Oh my gosh, what are those chicken legs? Oh my, how do you navigate this thing? Oh, there's eyes. Oh, this is so creepy. Oh, you can back, oh, you can back it up. Back it up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. <laughs> Oh gosh, this is bad. Is there a map for this? It's what that Nancy, Nancy Drew will do for you. <laughs> Honestly, how do we get where we need to go? They know I need a map too. I'm super lost. I don't need secret passageways to get lost. I just get lost roaming the halls of any of the games. I think I'm supposed to go where that gold square is. I'm supposed to go in this uh, turkey, turkey leg hall. We did it! Yeah, because, well, I knew there was a map for Message in Haunted Mansion, but I did not know there was a map for this one. Later, Susie. Have a great rest of your night. That's me. This is legit. Burial rituals. As preparation for the long and often dangerous journey through the afterlife, the Maya buried their dead with religious articles and objects that they had used when alive. Tools such as grinding stones and flint points, jewelry and other ornaments, small figurines placed in the arms of the dead for companionship. Priests were buried with their books. Jade beads were placed in the mouths of corpses along with ground corn for physical and spiritual sustenance in the afterlife.
Oh, is this another matching game? So we have another matching game. And another quiz. Let's see. I wonder if Henrik would remember the answer. What animal did Lord Pakal fear the most? So we're gonna have to ask Henrik. Oh, I didn't go this way. Ooh, King Pakal's tomb. When King Pakal died after 68 years on the throne, his remains were adorned with rare jade ornaments, including the now famous Jade Death Mask, and deposited in an elaborately carved stone sarcophagus, much like the one you see here. The sarcophagus was placed in a tomb set deep under the temple of the inscriptions at Palenque, Chiapas, Mexico. Like the archaeologists who discovered Pakal's tomb in the 1950s, your curiosity and hard work have led you to a hidden chamber. Hmm. Ah, oh, glow stick? Oh, you must have to get that at the once you complete everything. Coco, welcome to the stream. So glad to have you here. Challenge, using the logo graphs below, move the calendar stone so that the date equals 12 Kaban. Choose to track the day in 260 days. Here in this calendar, there are 20 weeks, each with exactly 13 days. The days were given numbers represented by bars and dots, while the weeks were represented by the following logo graphs. So are these the weeks? Yeah, there's 20 weeks. So we're looking for Kaban. Kaban. <laughs> I've been thinking about that video. I wish I could show you guys. I wish I had it right now on my computer. That I was thinking about that earlier. When we first opened the game, and they zoom in on Joanna's face while she's looking at the <laughs> while she's looking at the glass. I busted out laughing because I thought about that reel. <laughs> oh, you know the one I'm talking about too. The Mayans love Jade. <laughs> she's so silly. Okay, come on. Um, it's like a square with more squares around it with tentacles. I don't know if I'm gonna get that, but we're gonna try. Okay, so the Kaban, and what's the challenge? Move the calendar stone so that the day equals 12 Kaban. So t we want 12 days. What was it again? Like a dash means five. So it's this one. There's two dots. So five, five, ten, eleven, twelve. Excuse me. And then we want this one, right? It's this one. <gasps> My card wasn't in there. No. <laughs> No! Does it... Oh. Someone... Ooh. Ooh. I'm big mad. Okay, wait. I'm gonna do it again. 
At least it was this one. I feel like this one's not so bad to like forget your card. The other ones? The ball throwing one? The maze one? No, thank you. Okay, so we got that one. Moving on with our life. We need to talk to Henrik. We also should probably check our mail. Check the mail. <gasps> we have a package. Amazon, is this you? <laughs> okay. So, I don't know if you guys knew or not, but this is what they based the danger by design park those faces that are like ooh ah ah e these are the same faces so what it is it do they open oh how do i know which way they should go <laughs> You're the one on the right. <laughs> Do you remember what quality the Aya loved in mine, in their eyes? Did I? Maybe they should all look centered. That's what I was just thinking. Okay, I'm glad we were on the same page. And of course the celebratory music is just fire. Makes me feel like I did all the things right. Okay, so that was one piece. We got that. Or two pieces now. I did. I started at 1.30 today? <laughs> A long time ago? Okay. Next on the list, talk to Henrik. Yes. I need a task list for my task list. Good afternoon, young lady. Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan fool key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? The tomb. Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Uh -huh. huh. Now, how did I think of that? And another thing. You'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sunny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of, but Sunny was petrified of the Coatamondi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. This is a long shot, but do you know what animal Pakal was afraid of? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You rest up. I'll be back. Be careful. All right. Yeah, no, it's the triggers for me, too. I, do, I don't mind, like, the reading and learning. Like, that's fun. It's the triggers. I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotta wait. Oh, wait, I can't call this person. <laughs> I'm a lonesome polecat. <laughs> oh, okay. First of all, we're going to self-love ourselves because Tori's birthday is in 10 minutes, everyone. <laughs> we're going to be ringing in the birthday. Okay. Um, back to the museum. Yes. Really? No way is the educator. That's so cool. Did they did they ask you more about like where your inspiration came from? Were you like, yeah, Nancy Drew? I still have yet to rate the games. I need to do that. Alright. Y'all. 
So we have, oh, we have the, the answer. We can go here now. All right. Door number two. I think after this, I'm going to watch a murder documentary. Y'all feel me? Any, any good wrecks on a murder documentary? Have y'all seen the Nickelodeon stuff? I really want to watch that documentary. But I don't have HBO Max. Oh my gosh. Can, is this one of those that I can just guess on? Um... This would probably take a while to guess though, wouldn't it? Whoa, I got it! The corn god! Balak. Okay, so we know that... Talak is the corn god? No. Ahokin is the corn god. What the heck? Oh, yum. Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, are they really? They're getting the Wonka movie. Oh, gosh, I may have to get HBO then. Because I never even got to re like watch the Friends. The Friends like 2020 reunion, which I'm still upset about because I love Friends. And I haven't even had the chance, so oh, whatever. I'm just going to have to get every stinking streaming service. Oh, that's the sun god. I feel like this one's something down here. Yum is corn. Ahu was wind. Wasn't it? Or was it sun? Oh, it was sun. Oh, are you? I'm so sorry. Cool, 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 can is the wind. Man, I am so thankful. That y'all know what y'all are doing. <laughs> because I definitely do not. Okay, this is good to know. Max is pretty solid, so I should think about this. Oh, there's only two left. Okay, is Balak... The rain. Ah, oh, I would have gotten it wrong. Oh, yeah. It needs a card. Shh, Nancy, we know. Wasn't there another thing too I was supposed to do? Oh, that was for the glow stick. Okay. Let's go do the quiz. All right, this is the co Monday, co Monday. Oh yeah, oh, that was it? It was only one question? Oh, stop it, this is it. So now that I've completed this, can I get the glow stick now? jade mask. Pakal was buried wearing a jade death mask so that the gods of the underworld would recognize him as a king and accord him the same status and respect as he enjoyed on earth. Each of the jade pieces for this mask was individually carved down to the fine facial features. The pieces were then set into a wooden base. When Pakal's tomb was discovered hundreds of years later, the wooden base had rotted and the jade pieces lay scattered in the sarcophagus. The mask we know today, then, is a reconstruction. Interesting. Oh. Oh, that's the, oh, that's the, that's the Pakal carving. 
is it, why does it say your dog is <laughs> your dog is snoring so loud? Ooh, and we got a glow stick. Okay, so we're still waiting on Prudence's piece and the cultural center's piece, I think. I think. Let's go check them out. <gasps> There's another. Prudence? Nancy! <laughs> Please relieve me of these horrid fake rubies by offering them to the Maya God of Refuse, if there is one. I have no love for imposters. <laughs> oh man y'all should look i wish y'all could have been here for at least the first like 10 15 minutes when i started because there's a whole magazine of a prudence <laughs> of a prudence interview and i read the whole interview in prudence's voice i was having the time of my life <laughs> okay one two three four and the other piece is going to come in a styrofoam. So wait, what's the other piece we're missing? <laughs> yeah, we're still missing one more, right? Oh, Diego de Linda. I can't get that one. So should I just like go to bed or what? I mean, I can. Go to get some chicken nuggets on the way back to the Colonial Hotel. Okay. Talk to Franklin Rose. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Oops. False alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. Not a problem, dear. Oh, okay. Well... Oh, we haven't talked to Bess in a really long time. We should probably do that. It's me again. Nancy Drew, you will never guess who the cat just dragged in. Who? Frank and Joe Hardy. You're kidding. I haven't talked to those two in months. Let me tell you, they're as cute as ever. <laughs> George and I were just telling them about your latest case, and hmm, judging by the way they're hovering around me at the moment, I think they want to say hello. Sure, put them on. Hi, Nancy, it's Frank. <gasps> Frank Hardy, minute, what in the world are you doing in River Heights? Well, Joe and I just finished up a case out west, and we're taking a few days to drive back to Bayport. So we stopped in River Heights to say hello to our favorite girls. Well, that's awfully sweet of you. We should have known you'd be out there chasing trouble. Joe, is that you? The one and only. How's it going, Nancy? Oh, just knee-deep in another case. You know the feeling. Do we ever. There's one around every corner, isn't there? You can say that again. There's one around every corner, isn't there? All right, Joe. <laughs> Cheeky as ever, I see. It's the secret of my irresistible charm. Oh, brother. Listen, Nancy. Oh, we're we taking can call off again them? tomorrow. But if you want to talk shop about this case, why don't you give us a call on the car phone? The number is 973-555. Three three nine three. I can Sounds remember. great. I'll do that. Go get him, Nancy. Good luck. Oh, it's it's here! Oh my gosh! Okay. Oh man, I wish I I should have prepared better for this moment. Hold on. I forgot how to I don't know how to actually play the kazoo. Okay, this is my first time. <laughs> hmm? Okay, this is my first time ever playing the kazoo, but it's necessary. And we'll put my party shades on. Ahem. <laughs> my, not my party shades. <laughs> this is so... This is all spontaneous, by the way. Ahem. <laughs> Alright. 
everyone in the chat, everyone in the chat has to join with me. We're going to be uh, kazooing happy birthday. Um, and we all have to, Tori, you have to look and we have to stare at you so you can be uh, <laughs> um, embarrassed by this birthday song. <laughs> all right. him. <laughs> You know what? There is a reason why. There's a reason why I don't get rid of anything. Because you just never know when you'll use it again. Thus, this birthday hat. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Tori. <laughs> okay. All right. What are we doing? Like, waiting for. Oh, yeah, we're waiting for someone. Oh, everyone love on Tori. <laughs> okay, we're going to call the Hardy Boys. Ranking Joe Hardy, taking the mist out of mystery. Joe here. That's pretty cute, Joe. Can you come up with a slogan for me, too? Hey, Nancy. Hold on while I put you on speakerphone. You still there? Yep. Hi, Nancy. You got access to both of our brilliant minds now. <laughs> so how's the case coming along? Um, uh, well, when I'm finished. When I finished all the puzzles in the temple, I got this glowy green stick as a prize. Cool. I bet it's a glow light stick. What's that? They use them in the military a lot, uh, during nighttime training exercises and stuff. They're more portable and less conspicuous than flashlights. What is it that makes it glow? Reconstituted swamp water and moon dust? Who knows? But hang on to it, Nancy. It might come in handy. Yeah, but remember, those things don't last forever, so use it wisely. I'm sort of stumped by the riddle that Henrik translated from the monolith. Nancy drew stumped? I find that hard to believe. What's the problem? Well, it seems like opening the tomb and breaking the curse are the same thing. Oh, sure, but how does a person pull that off? It has something to do with putting these six keys together. But there's this other part that says, when the first king, that's Bacall, ascends the throne again. I hate to say it, but isn't it a little late for that guy? I mean, hasn't it been like 1,500 years? You just don't jump back on the throne after a hiatus like that. You're being too literal, Joe. It must have something to do with a date, don't you think, Nancy? I mean, mm -hmm. when did Bacall ascend the throne the first time around? I don't know off the top of my head, but the information must be in the museum somewhere. I'm gonna say June. Sometime in June. That's the traditional month for throne ascensions, isn't it? First of all, kid brother, June is the traditional month for weddings. And second, the date is not gonna be in our Gregorian calendar. It's going to be a date on the Maya calendar, which has a whole different structure. Frank, you are my number one favorite know-it-all. Talk to you later, fellas. Go get him, Nancy. Good luck. Yeah, so we talked about it, but I don't really know why it's doing that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. We don't. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> Oh, so sweet. Happy birthday. Um Okay. I feel like the only Oh yeah, we were were we just going to go to bed? Is that what it was? Cuz we were trying to wait for the next day so we could see the the package came in. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But what's weird is that I didn't have that earlier when I streamed and now I do. It's weird.
All right, let's go see if we have our final package. We do. I bet I can make a mold from this foam core. Okay, let's go make a mold. off <laughs> okay so now we have literally almost every piece we need I think we're just missing one more and I don't know where else we're supposed to get it from I don't know if I'm supposed to go see someone, call someone. Let's talk to Taylor. I should talk to him. All right, Taylor Sinclair. Any news? I'd better get going. Bye now. I need Joanna back? How do I get her back? Do I call Franklin? I know, and you see, it stumps me every time. I'm like, I literally genuinely don't know what to do next. Hello. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that was an option. But maybe if we go back now, there will be. Let's see, can we talk to Franklin about stuff? Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew, calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the yeah, pleasure of this not. call? Oops, false alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. Not a problem, dear. I think, Z Educator, we have all of them? Except, what was the one? The Delanda one? Yeah, Delanda. Diego Delanda. But it's true. I don't think I've talked to Henrik in a minute, so I'll talk to him. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, young lady. <gasps> you rest no. up. I'll be back. Be careful. Oh my gosh, we're stuck. Nope, we have the Poppy Dada one. I, I literally think it's just the Diego de Landa. But I will try calling the cultural center again. No, they don't want to talk to me. They're so sick and tired of me calling. <laughs> I've called so much. She might be back, I don't know. 
she's not. What have we been, what have we missed? We did open the coffin thing. We did do that. Weird. Voicemail. Is it Joanna? Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press this. I think I saw the chat earlier say that they were Joanna haters. I am also. <laughs> because we hadn't even met her but for five minutes. This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. For five minutes. And Joanna is like, well, I just, why don't you just take your little magnifying glass? My what? <laughs> My little magnifying glass? Oh, really? Why? I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Don't worry, I'm used to it by now. And after all, this situation is no more treacherous than my recent attempt at a ski vacation in Wisconsin. Anyway, about Beach Hill. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Oh, let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Mm. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. <laughs> let, me, let me be frank. <laughs> that was such a top tier joke. And I want everyone to know that watches this stream in the future or if you're like lurking right now. Franklin Rose saying, let me, let me be Frank. And Tori saying, how about we just let Frank Hardy be Frank is the funniest thing that has ever been commented. <laughs> but with Henrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. I mean, uh, I, uh, I just got here. Oh, Mr. Rose, I'm not qualified to be a curator. I don't have the experience. Maybe not, but you are the best qualified detective I know, which is just what we need right now. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. <laughs> just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs okay. another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Well, I don't think I got Joanna back, did I? I gotta call him again? What? You have Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, how's your investigation coming along? 
Ah. Uh, <laughs> this whole game has been so chaotic. My play has been so chaotic. <laughs> I'm making good progress, and the Pakal carving is safe and sound. But I'm afraid I can't tell you everything yet. What in the world are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I can't explain everything now. I'll take good care of the carving, I promise. What can I say, Nancy? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Do what you have to do, but let's get this mess cleaned up, all right? So you'll call Joanna and invite her back to work? I'll call her right away. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Okay, sweet. So I guess we'll just go back to bed. Cause it, just so we can make sure we have definitely triggered things to happen. I bet you the like front desk lobby person of the Colonial Hotel is like, God, this girl again? <laughs> Wasn't she just here a couple hours ago? Probably worried about me sleeping at different hours every day. Whatever. I'm a detective. Okay. Back to the museum. Joanna? <gasps> Thanks for clearing my name, Nancy. Honestly, I mean, what kind of moron would I be to try and ruin my own exhibit? Anyway, we need to make up for lost time. I need you to go to the storeroom and start unpacking some of those crates. One of the pieces has a fancy security device on it. The code is 0677. Well, thank you. Sure thing, Joanna. I'll see you later. Semper ubi sabubi. Okay, how many of you have used that phrase since playing this game, Simper Ubi Sabubi? I used to say it all the time at school. <laughs> I would tell people that all the time. And they'd be like, what? Be like, Simper Ubi Sabubi! <laughs> it was the last piece! Oh my gosh! Oh! Uh. It was the last piece. All right, we can go build it now, right? Where do we do we build it with the where the pots at? Yeah. Oh, this right According here. According to Henrik's notes, I need to make a key out of these pieces. Oh gosh, do you guys remember what his notes said? Because I actually forgot. I, what, can I brute fort this? Okay, good. Oh, that doesn't really fit. Does this fit? Oh, this one fits. Why doesn't it want to go on? Should I be worried? Oh, that has to go in first. Hey, there we go. That's it. Now I have the key. Oh. We have, oh, okay. Now what? Do we have to go to the monolith and do something? How do, how do you like get around? Oh, like that.
Okay. So on, on what day am I supposed to be making this? Because this is the same calendar that I had to do earlier. Oh wait, you have to do it for all corners? Do you really? That's the lion? The day when the first thing that's throwing into your answer or to find the date yourself. Is that something that's gonna be like on in the museum, like on the uh, plaque? Yeah, just this one, I think. In the first missions of the zone again? Let me go see. Let me see if I can find it. Would it be under the gods? Was it again? It was the day when the first king ascends the throne again? And this Yeah, the only date I see is the an ascendance to the throne in 615 CE. Yeah. But that's not like the actual date. Yeah. It's not that. Is it over here? I don't think so. And you said a pamphlet up here? Oh, that's just showing the oh the si oh the symbols I see. I guess let's see this 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 date real quick and then we will open the monolith. Oh man, I hope the migraine does not come back on and you're able to get it to go away. Okay. Would it be under notes maybe? Call. Hmm. Dun, dun. Allow her soul to find her. Open the 
prison with six keys, right? Must be Jade, too late, no one knows. Oh, that was the answer for that. I don't think I see it in here either. First king ascends the throne again when the last Copan Copan fool has labored till the end of time. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so I would have thought that would have been like on a plaque. Oh, maybe so. Just real quick. Oh, oh, is this it? The text on the slab commemorates Pakal's ascension. Date of six. Lamat. Oh, I think that's it. So that's what it was. That's how you find it. And then what was the other thing? The other thing was like the co the copan copan full. Mm. Oh, six lamont's the only date I need. Well, good. Because <laughs> I know if I can at least put six on here, which should just be right there, that dot and line, then this one I can just kind of guess on because I don't know. I don't want to go all the way back in the temple for it. We did it! <laughs> Which one opened? Oh, that one. It looks like a keyhole. I'll have to choose which side of the cube goes here. Oh yeah, how do you know? Was that right? Man, I was guessing. Hmm. Can I keep guessing? Am I keep Am I just am I getting them right or am I just, or am I messing it up? Oh, okay, so I really was just getting them right? <laughs> That's so funny to me. So it's not that one either? Or this one? So if it's not that one. that one. This should be the last step. Oh my gosh, we're so close. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> it's me when I wake up in the morning. All right. It's blank. Who's your friend, Nancy? <laughs> Taylor Sinclair! So creepy. Who'd you expect, the Tooth Fairy? Looks like someone forgot her beauty cream. 
I guess we can't all age gracefully. I'm sure she would say the same about you. You've oh, been tell a top-notch Nancy. assistant, Nancy, but I'm afraid you're just not going to make it in the art world. No! This is my worst, uh, one of my worst fears, being like trapped Why in a small space. Why are you doing this? And it's Nancy, dark. do you have any idea what that book contains? Uh... This tomb and all of its contents belong to Mexico. Finders keepers, I say. <gasps> Uh -oh. Nobody even realizes this thing has any contents. Won't they get a surprise when they finally open it up and find that it contains a 7th century scribe and a 21st century detective. Adios, Nancy. Oh my gosh, I'm stressed out. You know, I'm also more stressed out too because my party hat's fallen off and I do not have the time. <laughs> I do not have the time. Something's missing here. Well, look for I'm it. I'm starting to run out of air in here. So, okay, where, where? What's that? Something's missing here. We know something's missing, Nancy. Look for it. Oh, ew! <laughs> I gotta get out of here. What the national treasure? Okay, well, what else am I looking for? suffocating in here well Let don't do out. that don't suffocate this may be the scribe's notes about the call that's awesome but we're dying and this is more important put it in the eye <gasps> behold our heroine emerges from the tomb like a mermaid from the sea meanwhile the foolish villain stews in the sour soup of his own miscalculation this From so deep good. in the recesses of time, a wise royal scribe whispers her thanks. Top and notch the priceless writing. chapter of history is rescued from obscurity. Way to go, Nancy. Yes. What in the world? In your face. Ah, confound you, Nancy Drew. Dear Dad, it was great to talk to you on the phone last night. I can't wait to see you back in River Heights so where good. I can fill you in on the whole story. Can you believe that your own daughter was recently standing face to face with a real mummy? Now that the scribe's book has been recovered, I understand how important it is and why Taylor thought he could make a fortune selling it on the black market. The book contains one of the only personal accounts of Maya life in existence anywhere. I'm sure it'll be a tremendous addition to our knowledge of the Maya once it's translated, that is. And now that Henrik's memory is back up to speed again, I'm sure he'll be itching to get to work on it. Taylor Sinclair won't be making any art deals for a Big long Bunny time. Big Bunny caught red-handed. Sure. I guess I shouldn't be surprised about Alejandro's <laughs> discovery that the Pakal Carving's provenance documents were so faked good. after all. When Franklin Rose and the board found out, they arranged to return the artifact to Mexico right away. Mexican officials are so happy to have the artifact back, they have pledged a new era of diplomatic relations with Beach Hill. Joanna sure learned her lesson about making deals with shady operators like Taylor. Mm -hmm. The board has agreed to give her another chance, as long as she reforms her business tactics. <laughs> Please look at that. And what else? Oh yes, Barbie Dadas announced a new direction in her artwork. All her new paintings are going to feature, what else, mysterious red handprints. So I guess everyone is taking off in new directions now. Like that I'm going to stay and help this exhibit get launched. But I'll see you back at home in a couple of weeks. Have a safe trip home. Love, Nancy. That was so good. That was so good. Ooh. Dear Nancy, Bess and George told me you're on a case in D.C. I hope everything is working out for you. I wish I could say the same for me. I'm planning on living here. But there's been some trouble. I think someone or something doesn't want me here. Please. Nancy, Ooh. I'm afraid I can't stay here very much longer. I know you're busy, but I'm desperate. I need you to come out and investigate. Please say you will. Your friend, Sally. This is the first trailer we've ever gotten, wasn't it? For a game? <laughs> I look like a unicorn. <laughs> Carter corn. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Wow. Okay, third time. Third time? Third time, fourth time, fourth time. 
third time, I don't know, playing this game and playing it as an adult. Last time I played it, I was a teenager. I loved it. It was so good. Now, of course, there was a lot of, you know, waiting around, reading, but I don't mind it. This was so good. The story was so good. Ah, uh, what the heck? I'm being raided again. What's up? <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Man, you guys missed it. You guys missed it. We are here for all the raids.